Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of BCS Community Connections. And today on the podcast, I have none other than Mrs. Ashley Siegert. Ms. Siegert runs the, well, she runs multiple things, but what we're going to talk about today is we are going to talk about figment photography. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into some of the other businesses towards the tail end of the podcast here. Appreciate you coming in. I know it's kind of short notice and and definitely got in here quickly so that we could kind of sit down and strike while the iron's hot because you got a lot of irons in your fire. So, so, uh, so we'll start figment photography. What I do want to talk about first before we get into that is talk about your background. Mm -hmm where you grew up, what brought you here to College Station, and then we'll kind of get into the business a little bit and kind of talk about the history of that. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Um, I was born and raised in Atlanta, um, just 20 miles north of Atlanta in Roswell. Um, and my my dad was the Atlanta Braves sports producer, so I grew up in production. I was born into a TV truck, and my mom was also a graphics operator, and, um, and then later was like, one of us has to get off the road and <laughs> raise these kids. And so um, she had a home base you know, entrepreneurial spirit, home-based business. Um, so I grew up in that kind of world and uh, went to Clemson. So I'm not an Aggie, mm. but I know. And I, I, I'll I, edit that I part don't out. wear a lot of orange <laughs> around town, but, um, and honestly, to, when I moved here, Clemson was not the football powerhouse that it is today. This is true. So. This is true. <laughs> um, but and, and Clemson's a tough cheese subject, right? About I know, that too, I so. know. <sighs> what are you going to do? That's okay. <laughs> um, but I, uh, uh, I met um, my husband at a wedding of a friend that I knew in college. He was uh, born and raised in Wichita Falls. And so we met and we dated long distance for two and a half years. And then um, he said, you know, Enough move out business. here to Texas. And I said, uh, and he was like looking around to where and ended up. He was a school band director. So yeah. um, he taught in Navasota for seven years. Okay. And so we moved here and um, I started the company. And then about four years ago, we got the company up to where he was able to retire out of teaching and be a stay at home dad. And now I just sprint through life and <laughs> tag your in. Yeah. I'm going to work, honey. <laughs> Yes. Nice, so, you. <laughs> so when y'all moved here, did you move to Navasota? We moved to Navasota for the first year. Yeah, that did last for a but long time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a self-proclaimed like suburban princess. Uh, like yeah. I get it, and so I have learned a lot about like FFA and like all the things as I in my time here. Yes, yes that I was not aware of in my upbringing. Um, but I, yeah, I needed a little more. Um, as my husband calls it, concrete jungle than Navasota had to offer. If there's, so, a, if there's anything you ever need to know about how small your town is, yeah. if the Dairy Queen is the biggest thing in yeah, town, then yeah. you're pretty much there. You know, so. <laughs> and it's come a long way since we lived there. I will say there are a lot of businesses that did not exist when we Listen, lived there. I, if, if my wife were sitting here with us, she could totally relate to you because our first, it's our first year, might have been our first year of marriage. We've been married 25 years. And our first year, I took her from San Antonio, mm-hmm. which she had never left, yeah. to Childress, Texas, yep. which most people, if you don't know where Childress is at, <laughs> you just don't know where Childress is at. It, it, it has a Dairy Queen. That's yeah. about as good as it gets. Yeah. And, and I can remember uh, there were no close towns. There mm-hmm. wasn't like a college station just down yeah. the road like it was here. It was like the biggest, closest town was... Oh my gosh, it was in Oklahoma. It was Altus <laughs> and it was like 60 miles away. So, and that's, that's terrible. Just to say you had to go to Oklahoma to the biggest city. Yeah. Um, and she hated it, hated it. Yeah. So I, I can relate. I, I didn't, get it. I didn't, I will say I didn't hate it. My best friend, um, drove here with me from Atlanta and we packed my car with everything it could hold. And we spent one night in New Orleans with some yeah. friends and then drove to Navasota and we, we got out of the car and we started to unpack and she looked around and she looked at my husband and she was like, Good you, luck. You've done it. You've done, done it now. Yeah. No. Well, and the good thing about Navasota is Navasota is kind of centrally located yes. in between some major, yeah. uh, some major cities to be able to get. Yeah. So definitely a little bit easier to probably stomach in that move. As yeah. Well too. So yeah. y'all then pack up, move to College Station. So yeah, um, about a year after we, we bought a house in College Station and he commuted, but we were on the South side. So it was still, yeah. what, you know, 75 mile an hour, 20 minute commute to work and, yeah. and easy. And then, um, and then, yeah, we've been in that same house ever since. And, awesome. Yeah. So what year was that? Uh, we moved here in 2010, the okay. summer of 2010. We All bought right. our house in College Station in 2011. So nine years into College Station, 10 years into the area, mm-hmm. basically. Okay. Yeah. Or going on 11, I guess yeah. you should say. So, awesome. So, 
kids? Yes, we have a five-year-old little boy. Okay. Yeah. Keeps your husband really busy. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) He is, we say, a very large amount of personality in a very tiny package. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I wouldn't know anything about that either. (laughs) So, uh, so... Okay, so husband stays at home. You decide that, that you're going to start a business. Yeah. So, so walk me through this process. And and is the original business that you start is it a photography business at that point? Uh, yeah. So Figment is still actually using the same logo that okay. I started with. Um, so when we moved here, I was working in television. Um, I've been on been with the ESPN company for 15 years, and still technically on the roles I'm furloughed at the moment because there hasn't been much in the way of sports, um, but had been working for ESPN. Well, at the time I was a freelancer, so they didn't know to crew me in Texas. I was still on all the Atlanta roles. And um, so, but that year the, um, the Astros went to the, or the Rangers, Rangers went to the world series. The um, final four was in Houston. Mm. There was the Super Bowl was in Dallas. Like everything happened in Texas that year. So, there were opportunities for me to get my name like in the Texas market. So I was still doing television, but I have an education degree. And so, um, I started substituting a little bit in Navasota. Um, but I looked very young and most of their substitute needs were in high school. And, it, I was in over my head. Yeah. So I was like, who let the student in here? Yeah, to literally teach? the first day, like a desk flew across the room, like yeah. furniture was flying through the air. Yeah. And like, I walked into the band hall to my husband at the end of the day and I got a standing applause. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I had filled out a police report. Like it was a whole thing. <laughs> so I was like, so, maybe this is not yeah. my welcome future. to education. here, yes. right? yeah. Um, and so, uh, honestly, like got on Craigslist and was like, what am I going to do with myself and my time? And, um, I found a magazine at the time out of Brenham, um, that needed a sales rep in the BCS area. And I was like, well, what better way to get to know our new home than to have to sell advertising to every business owner. And and honestly, it's the best sales training you could ever have because you're, it's literally cold calling and just denials. In person. Yes. (laughs) hundred percent. And so I was driving back and forth to Brenham for staff meetings and back and forth to college station for sales. And so, um, that was amazing training just in sales in general, which will serve me the rest of my life and building my businesses. Um, the magazine no longer exists, um, but at the time when I was when I was selling ads, they asked they had a blog going with it, and they were like, well, you know, we would love to feature a lot of our clients that are buying ads on our blog. So can you take some images of what they're doing at these businesses? And I was like, I have this little like Casio thing that you couldn't even like change the lenses, <laughs> and I was like, I should probably know what I'm doing if I'm going to get published right off the bat. Yeah. Maybe I should take a class. And so I actually signed up for a class shooting a manual at the community center. Um, like through the parks department and took like a six week exposure class. And I remember like I went outside and my husband was working. I went outside with like a line of oranges on our front, like sidewalk at our Navasota house and, um, actually locked myself out, like in my socks, trying to take pictures of like depth of field of oranges and (laughs) had to like go to the neighbor's house to like call the band hall because like my phone was inside and locked myself out. It's a hot mess. But, um, but that was where it started. And, and, um, I started, we got married around that time. So I was asking my wedding photographer a lot of advice and, you know, it was no competition. She's in Atlanta. We got married in Atlanta. So she kind of walked me through the initial camera purchase process and lenses and all that kind of thing. And around that time, um, there was an, there's, is an online uh, education company for creatives out of Seattle and San Francisco called Creative Live. And at that time, it was just starting. And so their deal was you can watch any of the things that are being produced live for free, or you can purchase it to watch it later. And it's like $99 and you get it forever. Um, And so at the time, we had no kids and I was, you know, doing sales calls, but I could literally sit there for three days and watch all these incredible instructors from all over the world teaching photography right. for free and sit there with my camera and like the poor dog, I would like put her in like a, a dark bathroom with my flash and figure out how the flash worked. And she's, <laughs> she'd pass it down. So she's like, I don't care. Do whatever yeah. you want. Just feed um, me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so they were my test models. I had like, you know, little statuettes that were my test models all over the house and, um, and f- just figured it out and, um, got, you know, and uh, the girl that did the flag core at Navasota for the band, she played around with um, graphic design. So she made me a logo and I already owned the domain name figment.com because of a project that a friend of mine in Atlanta and I had started and that never came to fruition. So I was like, well, I already own that. So I guess that's my name. And 
then it just so, kind of started. It's, so it's not figment together. It's fig, fig dash, dash mint. mint. M-I-N-T. Right. Which to do all over again, I would not have a hyphen. I would not have a letter that's different from how you normally spell a word. I know. Listen, I made you, all the mistakes. <laughs> ours is m-mapparel.com. I mean, I get it. Yeah. I understand. So, so that comes to be, you already own the domain. Mm-hmm. You decide at this point, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start extending out on my, on my knowledge base. Yeah. You're going in, getting equipment, building yep. it up. And we we're talking before we got on here that I was telling you, my wife and I used to do a little side photography business as well, too. And it's not cheap to get into. Right. I mean, you're committing you're committing thousands and thousands of dollars to get into it. And at that time, quite honestly, technology in and of itself was growing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of think back to when we had our camera equipment and things like that. But probably back in... 11, 12, somewhere in there, you're like high-end DSLRs mm-hmm. are probably 10, 10 max. No, oh, you're, 10 max. I thought you meant dollars. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah they were always two yeah. and $3,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but you're probably looking at your max on megapixels yeah, at probably 15, like 10 to 15 in, in yeah. that range. And so, you know, now we got cameras that, you know, on our phones that shoot to this stuff. And, yeah. and so... It is the, the interesting part about photography is photography is definitely a technological based deal that every year something is growing mm-hmm. off of it and you can literally get obsolete pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, whereas in the past when it was film, uh, straight film and things like that, you had a life cycle on those types of equipment that would last really quite a long time. It yeah. was really more and, and probably even more so based today. Uh, lenses become really important in your repertoire as much, you know, because a lot of people think, well, I just need this new base, you know, this new base camera. And then, you know, really the, the technology that's in lenses today, as opposed to even just 10 years ago, or even when you picked it up has changed tremendously. And so in this market, you decide entrepreneurs where you're going to end up setting your, your crown at, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Peace out to Navasota. Appreciate the uh, the <laughs> substitute teaching. Uh, but did you always feel entrepreneur was just kind of in your spirit based oh, on where your mom was at? Some of that. I mean, I was the kid that, so my grandparents, you know, those candied nuts, the yeah. pecans and oh, almonds. Yeah. yeah. So my grandparents had one of those businesses when I was growing up and they had a weekly stall at this massive flea market in North of Atlanta. And so when I was like 12 and 13, I would go spend the night at their house and I had my like face painting kit and mm. then I would set up a table in front of their stall and they were like on the main drag in the middle. And, um, and I would do face painting and eventually grew into like, I would get that colored hairspray and like mm. hair streaking. And like, I was making bank at 12, like oh, yeah. at the flea market, working like a 12 hour day, you know, yeah. like, and that was really like that fed me. And that was definitely a spark I had. Yeah. Right I now. mean, so, you know, in the entrepreneur vein of things, there's, there's definitely always for people who have either done it or thinking of doing it or whatever, this is, there's this idea. The first thing that, that comes into it is, Oh, I have a little freedom. I can do it as I choose when I choose <laughs> that kind of stuff. Just, you know, but then also when you look, when you bounce away from a structured corporate world or something like that, the safety net of that is gone. Sure. And so really you kill it, you drag it home, all of those things you were talking about, the sales leads and everything that you were doing before, mm-hmm. really kind of setting the foundation for growing that part of your business. Like, Absolutely. you know, that's really kind of the struggle is people can see, they envision what they want that business to look like, but maybe don't know how to get from A to B, right. especially on the sales side of it. They just assume, man, if I just start a social media page, tell all my friends that I'm opening a photography business. It's just going to all roll in. What will roll into you is a bunch of friends that are asking for discounts on your services. Right. So, I mean, Oh, Hey, I didn't know you're doing this. I would love for you to shoot this. And, then you start, you know, trying to figure For pricing. Exposure. Yeah, you know, I've got X number of thousands of people. And Everybody friends. will see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's interesting that we kind of push to that because I think the other part about photography is it is an it is an overpriced 
it's an overpriced business. I know you're like going, where are you going with this? Wallet? <laughs> and so you're like, hold on. Like, bring it, bring me along with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drag this full circle. I promise. It's an overpriced business to amateurs and to people who don't know what it takes to sure. get the job done. Sure, sure, sure. You're like, Whew, yeah. <laughs> please don't tell people I'm overpriced. Well, because and that's hard to convey also to educate is. the client because Absolutely. they're like, I, all they see is you clicking a click, button. Click, 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 yep. Yeah. They don't see the back end. They don't see the overhead. They don't see the training. Yeah. They don't see like all that stuff yeah. and so they're like why i don't understand and yeah well and they try to justify it by going hey listen i can go buy a camera for this right. or my phone will do this or my friend will come over here and push a shutter button sure. for me or whatever and then you know they think editing is an instagram filter or a snapchat filter or right. whatever and you know, i make my skin look soft and you know put pretty little stars everywhere or whatever right you know it is it so in saying overpriced really to the amateur eye of sure. people who don't know the business or don't know the backside effort especially post-production work because that's really you can go out and get front side everything else there's a lot of stuff happening on front side mm -hmm. that people aren't familiar with you know we were talking about, you know, a lot of software, especially if you're really talented at it nowadays, can really help fix oopses. Mm -hmm. But there are major oopses that can happen. Like you can blow a photo out yeah. or you can completely darken a photo. Maybe your flash doesn't go off in a low light area mm -hmm. and there's no recovery really in a lot of that. Right. I mean, you can only do so much with that. So professional photography, when you get into it, is you're really getting the experience from that photographer mm -hmm. who's brought that in to not make those kind of amateur mistakes Correct. that your friends are going to make, your family's going to make, or, you know, I, I just got this camera for Christmas. Let me, let me come shoot a family get together right. or wedding, hopefully not a wedding. <laughs> not, you just never know sometimes. <laughs> but the idea of that is, is, is you bring all of that knowledge and all of that base to the forefront you give that experience and knowledge right there on site mm -hmm. and photography what most people miss in photography as well too the the let's talk about the unseen stuff mm -hmm. you talked about you know the knowledge base the classes the time invested and everything else but the other part of that also is is that people part the people right? part is everything uh, i yeah. mean you can go onto somebody's page and see a great page of like awesome photographs and all this other stuff. But there's something to be said about the connection during that shoot. 100%. Right? And that connection during the shoot is hard to replicate when you're not a good people person, yes. when you don't have the ability to connect with your subject that's in front of you mm -hmm. and get the most out of them. Because, you know, again, and we were talking about the the dads who are like, oh my God, is it family picture time? Exactly. Again? Or the kids who are like, okay, I only have 10 minutes in my attention window and right. that's over with and now I need ice cream. And, you know, all of those things that are working against that photographer, right. people who have been in the business for a while but have a good understanding of how do you manage those things yeah, yeah. the human the human side yes. of it that's not accountable for anything until you really start doing photo shoots right. right and then you start going okay how do i get this person who's automatically walking in doesn't want to be here right you know or we're on site somewhere and i know that they're already ticked off that that their wife or whatever has drugged them into this deal yes how do i how do I basically disarm that person mm -hmm. so that I can get what's underneath all that irritation and everything yeah. else? So, and, and that's everything. That's everything that we have really built our brand around. And as I've started training associate photographers, the, the technical has to become so second nature. I need my photographers and myself to be able to dial in the exposure, dial in the lighting, dial in exactly like where I'm going to stand somebody and how I'm going to pose them. So second nature because my outward how I'm interacting with them yeah. needs to set up the, the most wonderful experience so that right. we're getting the most out of them. So all you see when you are shooting with me is me managing your emotions really and yeah. your attitude. And so if, if we get to the point where somebody is threatening their child or <laughs> like, Let's yeah, take a break. yeah, 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 we, <laughs> and, or if, a, if there is tears period at yeah. all, like we stop everything, yeah. we take a break because that is not the experience I want anybody walking sure. away with. And I've, I've joked that my claim to fame is that, yeah, the toddlers, the surly teenagers and the dads that don't want to be there walk away going, that was actually pretty fun because we have, we have come up with strategies to 
create moments. Yeah. And so the moments are what we're shooting. The moments are what we're trying to capture because I don't want you to go look back at those images and be like, oh, you had no idea we were dealing yeah. with a meltdown in the, that moment. Yeah. Like, And that's what you're going to remember from that moment. I want you to look at it and be like, that's the most genuine laughter we've had as a family right. because it's so super cute and super fun. And so we, I actually refer to my associate photographers in our new brand that we've put together as connection directors because yes, they're taking your photo. Yes, they're lighting. Yes, they're doing all the technical, but more than that, they're directing the experience so that the shots that we're getting are magical. And like right. when you see them, like my goal every time when we reveal an, a collection of images to you is tears. Yeah. Like tears are everything because if I evoke emotion out of you from what we have created and captured and, and the moment that we've created and captured, then we, we've done our job. Yeah. And that's a valuable part. One of the things that I saw, I think it's on your one on your website is you really try to understand before you even grab the camera and you're sitting down, like, like, what are you hoping to get out of this? 100%. What story are you wanting to tell? Yeah. And so, and that's hard to, you know, you think about it. If you go to a family photo shoot mm -hmm. and most of the time, I'm not, I'm not discounting everybody here, but most of the time that's going to be the mom or the wife that's having that conversation with mm -hmm. you that they're going to sit there and go, I really think this is cute. I've seen this. Mm -hmm. My friends have done this and they're kind of pulling in these yeah. outside references for you. And then you've got to take those outside references and create something completely unique out of that. Yes. Right? Like I don't, I know you don't want to look like this picture sure. over here, but the fact that you're showing me some things or maybe even, you know, if it's websites that you can address, you know, here's a picture that I've looked at or mm -hmm. shoot me something that I have for reference points, then you're building kind of this idea on the backside yeah. before you get in front of them of, okay, here's what we're trying to plan. do. And then it really kind of falls in your lap though. I mean, yeah. yes, they have an image. Your goal is, is to bring that image onto film. Yes. And now all of a sudden it, and I say film, I know it, that's an, that was sweet. That's, I, I know it. it's an old <laughs> photographer problem, but bring that on and bring that on basically to reality bring it in to the life. picture. Right. So yeah. that, that when they go down, they go, you hit exactly what I was looking for. That's my goal every time and honestly there are a lot of photographers who get annoyed when they get pinterest pages or they mm. get like can you make this or whatever but for me a i get bored doing the same thing over and over so bring sure. it on bring yeah. me a challenge and b um I can't give you what you have in your head if you don't show it to me yeah. and so and maybe i see it and i go I love it and here's how we can elevate it Absolutely. and here's how we can make it even cooler and even better and how's, here's how we can make it actually more relevant to you and your family and your people and your story and all that kind of thing. And that's why we do a design consultation for every shoot. We do not go out onto a shoot without a preliminary design to consultation where we talk about who all is going to be involved, what's everybody wearing, where are we shooting, why are we doing it here, there, wherever, yeah. what's your goals for the images? Are we building a wall collection? Are we building an album? Is this a gift for somebody? Like, why are we doing it so that we can do it properly? Well, and it, it's important. It's important to know, you know, again, that's a great point. It's important to know where's this going to yes. land? Is this going to grandparents? Right. Is this going on your massive wall in your living room? Yeah. You know, where you're not just going to put one big picture, you're probably going to put a, collection. a multitude of pictures yeah. in certain orders and things like that. And are you trying to tell a story within these pictures? pictures. Right. And so as these folks come forward, I, I mean, I, I'm just speaking from, from when I did it, I, I'm more of a visual, mm -hmm. you know, show me kind of deal. And mm -hmm. then we'll kind of build off of that as opposed to, to audibly, you know, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I've been there, done that. And I, I know exactly what you're trying to tell me, but right. man, if, if I can pull together pieces of that and yeah. then use the creativity that's at the the forefront there, which yes. is what they get from you guys is that, listen, you're going to get my input mm -hmm. into what it is that you're trying to do that maybe you even spur ideas that aren't even at the forefront yes. with that person. And that's how the best stuff comes about Absolutely. is when you give me a little bit and I'll give you a little bit. And when we, when we combine them, we're going to come up with something that nobody's ever done. Yeah. So, um, if you go to my website, the first image that you see on the top, um, of, uh, Ellen Wilcox and Steve Tinkle and their kids, um, in their kitchen and mm -hmm. it's actually inspired by a, um, a magazine editorial that she had seen that, um, 
Chris, uh, the guy that played Mr. Big, had done in um, like Vanity Fair, I think. Mm. And she was like, what if we did something kind of like this? And then it was her house and her wardrobe selections and then like all the kids' personality. And like we took a zillion different frames to kind of figure out what right. the flow was going to look like. And that came out looking like nothing anybody else has Well, so I know which picture you're referring to because as a part of my research for it, that really resonated with me when I opened your website because it's got a vintage feel to mm-hmm. it in a modern day era mm-hmm. right like and you're just sitting there going wow like, like you know again i think about all of the other websites that i've been to photography websites and everything else but it's unique to your brand yes it's the idea that like this is not you know everybody's expecting hey you're gonna go to fig-mint.com and you're gonna open up what's the first thing you see you see a little kid like laying yep. in the grass and you Big know trees, yeah, pretty, and all, yeah you know or here's a couple staring at each other which you do all those things oh yeah but that's not your focal vision right as you come onto the page right. and so when you go onto the page and you're landing on something that quite honestly i mean I mean, I'm old, but I'm not that old. I'm 48, but I can resonate with the idea of the nostalgia behind that picture that you created, right? In that it's probably one generation back from me, but mm-hmm. it's 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 a visual of something that I recognize even from back being a kid right. in how it's laid out and how it's shot. And again, I think that's the idea of okay, here's these ideas that I have as your customer, but now here's what I envision that. Right. And it's a completely different retrospect to it yeah. while still encompassing what that customer is wanting, right. right? Just giving them a different vision or a vocal, a, a focal point that's different maybe than where they were standing. And so, and, and several of your deals are like that. Mm-hmm. You look on your website, it's not just your customary kind of, you know, blend in and formal. Yeah. Well, and which is great because listen, the, the concern that I would have if I don't know a photographer in town and let's say I don't have somebody that's connected in well enough to refer one. And now I've got to go do the research myself. And so I go out there and I do the research. I mean, yeah. Am I trying to kind of match up to somebody that maybe is doing something similar to what it is that I have? Mm-hmm. Yes. But also at the same point, if I see something that's completely in left field that I wasn't thinking about and seeing how that shot. Now your wheels are turning. Yeah. Then I'm like, wow, what else could this person accomplish for me? Right. And so you kind of naturally are drawn into that when you see something that is unusual. Right. Because unusual in the world of photography really creates next big thing. Right. Right. It's not just, you know, yeah, okay, stare into each other's eyes. Yeah, sure. I get it. I'm trying to get 15 <laughs> years out of you, 20 years, 25 years out of you. It is the uniqueness of re- almost rebranding what that looks like mm-hmm. for a couple or for a family or for whatever, an event, whatever that looks like. Yeah. So that they get something that they never really even intended to get from you. Right. But you brought it to light for them. And then still put it within this perimeter of, of expectation. Right. But just things that weren't, you know, it's almost like creating your own soup, right? Like, right. Oh, let's throw this. Let's in try here. this. Yeah, let's say, yeah. This is going to taste so pretty good. It's funny. My next door neighbors moved here from Orange County about a year and a half ago. Mm. And they've been embracing their Texas life. And they ended up getting chickens. And so they have these three chickens that live in the backyard. And they do that whole the fresh eggs and all the things. And I needed, as I was training my associate this summer, I needed models. And um, so I said to my neighbor, I was like, how would you feel about bringing the chickens? Because I want my associates to know, like, you could get anything thrown at you at any moment. And so I'm going to throw as many things as I can at you while I'm there to help you navigate them as humanly possible. So we brought the chickens in. And so I had this vision in my head of like them holding the chickens who to them are like puppies. Like they are bonded yeah, they're, with they're these pets. chickens. They really are. Yep. And I wanted like kind of this like movement of like the chickens like fl- flying around them a little bit and them all being like, you know, d- just tense. Like what are they going to do? Are they going to hit me? And um, and we got that image and it's like out on a ranch on a dirt road with the tree canopy behind them and like every everything just hit at the right, right time. And it's such a killer image. And that's my goal every time is like, can I look at something and be like, is this telling the story of them and their family? Like they, like when they put that image out there, all their friends in California are like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you have changed your life completely. And there, there, you can see the joy in them like 
with the chickens. Like it's just. Yeah. And as a photographer with a business, you don't necessarily want to create a portfolio of just everyday yeah. shooting stuff right. that, that people have seen hundreds of times over. Right. You know, having that uniqueness in there is again, some of the separation from why am I different than Sally Joe photography over here? Mm -hmm. And why are you going to want to use me? And so here's a portfolio of some things right. that we've done that's a little unique, a little different than maybe right. most people would anticipate, like having chickens fluttering around. Exactly. And, <laughs> and again, but this also then lends subconsciously in your customer, your customer is sitting back there going, what would they, they do could, with that? Exactly. Yeah. If you could do this, what story could we tell with our family? Yeah. And that really is, you know, when you've got a unique photographer with a business that's out there that's based around telling the story mm -hmm. of this couple, this family, mm -hmm. this event, whatever that is. Right. Um, and that they don't just look at it with a linear focus, mm -hmm. you know, which is where a lot of photography businesses go. They mm -hmm. just go, oh, yeah, 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 I've shot that a million times, yeah. right? And it is somewhat challenging to you as the photographer because – you could literally, when you're, when you're shooting for so long, you can literally do stuff with your eyes closed. Oh, totally. And so even challenging yourself to that as a photographer can sometimes even bring forth things that you look at and go, I didn't even know I could get that out right. of me you right. know, or out right. of this camera or yes. whatever, you know. That's the best feeling in the world when you put a card in and you start to like download them and you're flipping through and you're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then you also know you're, this is why I got into this yes. business right here. I didn't and get in here And that moment of that creation cut. is what feeds it and, and what drives me. And that like, my husband asked me one time when I was like, I was, I was branding all of our commercial work under A Diamond Productions, which does all of our like commercial work for businesses that need to sell things. Right. And I was, I was kind of balancing that between figment and whatnot. And he was like, excuse me, what is your ultimate goal? And I was like that problem solving moment. Like, I don't care if it's, you know, I don't care what my subject is, but that telling the story and, and, and taking in all of the pieces and the puzzle pieces of like, where am I? What's the lighting? Like, what's the story? What's the, what's the goal? What are we trying to sell? Who are we trying to create a gift for? Like, that puzzle every time I yeah. pick up my camera is what feeds me and keeps me moving. And so that's why I don't mind having multiple brands that focus on different things because each of those brands is going to sell to a particular type of client. But at the end of the day, they all really do the same thing. Yeah. And it's like, let's sit down, let's figure out what your goal is. And then let's make the most epic version of that yeah. out of your puzzle pieces. And that's my, that's, that's what feeds me. I'm going to, I'm going to move a little bit off because I know what I'm getting ready to talk about is in another vein. It's not necessarily <laughs> right there with figment, even though it's kind of all wrapped together, but headshots was a good example of mm -hmm. what you were just talking about. So in my research, I researched on your Instagram page, you have a picture and I'm trying to remember a thought it's going to sound really stupid, but I thought it was Catherine Zeta Jones. You had taken a picture, uh, and I'm like, really? Like, she took a picture of yeah. me. And I clicked on it, but it's it's a lady who is in a big brim hat. The focal oh, point yeah. is really at her face. She's not. She doesn't have a lot of background behind her. Yeah. It's really more focalized up and front. It's Cassidy Barton. A lot of your listeners will know Cassidy. She's Shout a downtown Brian, downtown Brian fixture. Yeah. <laughs> She's one of my favorite humans. You look like Cassidy. Yeah, she does. Just, I know. Just, so, just I know. so you know. She looks like a Disney princess. But then, <laughs> so I opened that picture up just naturally because it was a little different than what I saw from, from some of the other ones. And I'm going, oh, that's unique. But then I notice over on the right, on the comments, Morgan is over there and she goes, I want a headshot like this, mm -hmm. just like this, where it's more front focused. But again, in Morgan's business, you know, she's not your average realtor. Yes. How she, she wants to kind of look different. Yeah. She wants to manage reality a little different yes. than others that are around her. Yep. And that particular style kind of just rang out and, and then is reflective in her comment over here of just going, can you recreate this for me? Right. And so again, did, then, I, did you then go see Morgan, I did, I <laughs> Morgan and Abby's headshots? Cause they're killer. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it is the idea of the uniqueness of your brand yeah. then can also translate to the uniqueness of other people's brands. Absolutely. So if you're in the commercial business, mm -hmm. if you're, you know, if you're trying to get something to set your business away from 
all the other places and yeah. we're talking realtors as an example and they're all over the place you know what what's going to set me different from this it's not necessarily i mean the photo is just the end right yeah. i mean what you do on the backside really is what matters i'm not trying to i don't want to simplify well, and i mean you're gonna be a great go. realtor if you have a great unique headshot <laughs> you know so but that can span such a spectrum so my copywriter jessica lemons also yes. in town um she's copiesparkle.com now if you go to that website you're going to see her on a white backdrop in a rainbow tutu with glitter and unicorns. And I mean, we literally threw sprinkles. She did a cake smash where her face is like in the cake. We threw sprinkles, we threw fruity pebbles. Like that's her brand yeah. and that fits her brand. And we had a blast with it. Yeah. And like, we can do whatever needs to be done. And then, I mean, I've had, uh, you name it. I had a, an author who we came in, we did like a whole tablescape of like a typewriter and a mug and a plant and books yeah. and all that kind of thing. And she's, you know, posing in that so a headshot though we do fabulous you know regular professional headshots um it doesn't have to be that and yeah. that's not what your brand represents and now that social media and your website is so much at the forefront to have something that's unique and to have something that's really been thought through based on yeah. what it is you're trying to sell is going to set you apart completely so, yeah. yeah and well and that brand image of that photo can tell a story about personality. Mm -hmm. It can tell a story about who you are as an individual. It can tell a story about what your business is as a business. Yes. I mean, all encompassed in this one photo. And I think again, so again, when we talk about pricing and all of the other things behind all of that, you have to kind of take all that into reference of what you're getting and, yeah. and the end result of that. People want, unfortunately, we live in a society where people want something for nothing almost. Sure. And, 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 or like we were talking about on here, you know, Hey, now that you've got a camera, Ash, maybe you could do my family right. and, and you know charge me a quarter of right. what you normally charge and and so as an entrepreneur i think the other part of that is is in and i've seen this show up in a lot of discussion boards about knowing the value of your product mm -hmm. and not underselling the value mm -hmm. of your product like you have to build the product first and i'm sure when you first start out you're going okay i can't charge x because i'm not there yet right. but as i get there and more consistently there then x has to move along right. with knowledge along with product along with time everything that i'm investing in this to get this branding image that i'm trying to build for my business right. comes at a value to me yes. as the entrepreneur but also to you knowing what you're getting from yes. it and and you're not building a brand or trying to build a brand where it's like listen i'm good photography for about the next 25 minutes and then i'm out closing right. the doors and i'm gonna go do something else right. i mean you want to build a long-term brand and in the world of photography there are two things that bring people to the door one, obviously your portfolio is important, mm -hmm. right? But secondly, more so than anything else is referral. Yeah. And so when somebody is in somebody's house and they see that portrait up on the wall, they see the uniqueness of it or whatever, the first question, oh, who did that? Yes. Right? I see it all the time. I see people all the time on Facebook, like I need a photographer for this. And you can literally, if I go on to one of the Facebook pages and say, I need a photographer, I'm going to get 30 <laughs> people yeah. right out of the gate with probably 25 names i almost uh, other people will tag me now because i have a staff and they're they're on those more often and right. so they'll always put me down in there but to me i've i've never been first to jump onto those threads sure. for two reasons first of all when you're in a mom's group you're in a local group yep. and you're asking for those types of referrals you are in a a how do I get a deal mindset. Absolutely. And that's a different mindset than my clients need to be approaching right. what we're creating with. Yeah. And so I'm not looking to just get anybody looking for a photographer. Right. My my clients value what we do yeah. and value the experience they have in that and then value the pieces that they're going to have on their wall for generations. Sure. And so they're not scrolling through mom's groups looking for the cheapest photographer right they're not on craigslist putting right. stuff out they're not doing those kind of things right. i mean so and but you obviously know as well too when you have a client that you've done business with somebody ends up calling you or reaching back to you on messenger and saying hey so sally that did you did photos with last year for their family blah 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 blah, blah recommended me mm -hmm. 
Well, those are kind of in your vein because yeah. now all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm sure Sally didn't tell her that it was, you know, a dollar per shot or sure. whatever either, you know? So I kind of, you know, in that world, I, I would think you could kind of step into those and go, okay, I'm sure they would discuss, you know, oh, I'm not the cheapest and I'm not the most expensive, Correct. but you're going to get the best value for the dollar that you're spending with right. us. And so those conversations are a little bit easier probably to walk into versus, I'm not in here trying to get the low lying fruit mm -hmm. for people who just want to get pictures done. Correct. And again, and that's not to knock your brand yeah, yeah, yeah. or to say, you know, Hey, I did it for this person for this cheap. And then, you know, the first thing I think of is a wedding singer where they're both sitting at the table and they're like, I knew that you did it for so-and-so this right. cheap. Right. right. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you're, you're trying to keep consistency within your brand Correct. and, but growing that brand where also that pricing grows along sure. as still a value with what you get. And I well, think that's and where people miss it in the photography business. Yes. And as we've grown and we've added team members, yeah. now my overhead has, yeah, has gone up because now everybody on my team that touches that shoot yep. now has a cut of that yep. as well. And so that, you know, it allows us to take on a whole lot more volume yep. and make sure that we are properly you know, making every step work for the client to the greatest possible yep. way. Up, but upgrade yeah. of equipment. Yeah. Upgrade even in some cases of location. Yep. Maybe you outgrow a location or you need another place that you're going to end up having to set up shop at. Sure. Upgrading computer mm -hmm. equipment. I mean, all of those things are backside stuff that. And just fairly it, compensating my people. Yeah. And making sure that they're talented. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to go. Show, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure photography can be a passion, but nobody wants to go do it at eight bucks an hour. Correct. You know, so. And my editor, I mean, my editor has a master's from the Viz Lab here at AM. Like, right. she was like on her way to being like an animator for Pixar. Like, yeah. she. And then they decided to stay here and raise a family. And, um, you know, she's one of the top people I could have brought sure. in. And as, so. a, as a small business owner, and an entrepreneur, you also feel the responsibility to protect the brand and protect the pricing to grow that Correct. with those people that are there. Like, yeah. you know, same deal here. We're sitting here saying, well, I have 32 people that work for me. I'm responsible for 32 people. I'm yeah. not responsible for me. Right. And if and not anything, I'm usually the last one that gets paid in that whole mix. But, you know, that I want to ensure that my people are taken care of because they are helping me grow the brand and exactly. the image as well, too. So why photography? I mean, I, I, we talked about where your dad was at and that you kind of grew up around the videography production, side of it yeah. and the production side. What really was the grow into photography? You know, video editing is really time consuming. Mm, yes, it is. <laughs> and audio is a whole different piece. So, yes, it is. yeah, I've dabbled here and there in video, but um, I then I found Reagan, who you're going to have on the podcast um, coming up. And so I'd rather just have somebody on my team that does video and yeah. not have to do it myself. Um, it, honestly, like... For me, I feel like I was always going to build whatever my empire was around some kind of art. I had a passion for art growing up. I had a room in our basement that was like an unfinished room that my parents let me just like do all the art stuff in. And um, everything that I did, whether it was the face painting or in high school, I did hair for everybody for like the dances. And like it was always a visual art based something but right. I was always going to be an entrepreneur first and an artist second and mm -hmm. so this was the medium that I don't know if it was just destined to be the medium that I built it around um but I just I've as much as I've dabbled in videography I've I've never it's never captivated me the same way yeah. and um and my time in television uh I will say like it's always been like my dirty little ESPN secret is like I don't actually care about sports <laughs> we don't own a television and I don't like it, most people at this point especially 30 somethings if they get rid of their their dish or their cable or whatever, yeah. the one hiccup they have is their sports. Well, we don't have that hiccup in our house because right. we don't care, yeah. you know? And, um, and I know that's probably blasphemous to say in this town, but especially as somebody who literally has made said part the, of my said living. The Clemson fan. I know. <laughs> I, I'm a Clemson grad. Sports fan is a whole different, okay, all right. a whole different yeah, deal. And yeah. don't get me wrong. I'll root for them if, you know, they're <laughs> whatever. But, um, but it's uh, it, it, what I got from my time in television and I've loved in all the years that I've been in the production world and been in the sports world and, and what made my father a six time Emmy winning producer is the ability to tell a story mm. and that uh, to inform my dad always says, cause he's a talent coach as well. You have two jobs to inform and to entertain. Mm. And if you can do that in a single frame and you can create something that makes people stop and like, 
have an emotional reaction, Mm -hmm. then, you know, that's, that's just, that drives me. That feeds me. My, my marketing director, Carla yesterday was taking pictures of our gift cards on our sets at Instaland. And, and I was like, those look really good. Be careful or I'll train you up to be a photographer. And she was like, inanimate objects are my thing. And I was like, (laughs) honestly, like that bores me because like, I want to be able to like manipulate its emotions to bring something out of it, like, and tell a story. And so like, I can do still lives. That's fine. It's great. I can, you know, make the puzzle pieces work and I can get fired up about that in the right context. But, um, but I really like being able to like have those conversations that pull something out and I can turn like a toddler meltdown around in a second. If you say the right thing to that kid, you know, if you come down on their level and you take a soothing tone and you, and you say, tell me about your favorite animal. Like Mm. all of a sudden those tears dry up and they're like, I like penguins. And you're like, penguins you know and suddenly they're the coolest thing I, you know this person that's directing all this stuff stopped and started to have a one-on-one moment with right. that child yeah. and then i say do you know how to put your hands on your eyes and they'll cover their eyes do you know how to put your hands on your shoulders and then put it on their hips and then click 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 we got their shot you right. know like we move on to the next thing and so that process and that puzzle and that that's, that's really, what me. I mean, it's walking them down the road that you know you got to get them to. Exactly. And then like, okay, here's step one, here's step two, here's right. step three. I, I saw in one of your shots, you have a monkey around like your My lens. Your lens. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I might laugh at that if you brought that thing out. But, oh, you know, most of the props, the noisemakers, all that stuff, that is for the parents. That yeah, is yeah. very uh, little for the children. Yeah, it's definitely amusing. Because <laughs> it makes you stop yelling at your children to smile. Yeah. Well, so, you know, my wife and I did a photo shoot with, with one of our friends that that, that took our, our photos here a couple months ago. And, you know, my kid is nine. And so, uh, you know, she could kind of see that she needed to kind of pull her attention in and, and we're all sitting in this group and she's shooting down on us where we're sitting on the ground. And she says, tell me about something that you and your daddy do that you really love. Yes. And I'm like, well, that's a unique question. And then the response was, I love when my daddy takes me to go get chicken nuggets. I'm like, this is what I have built here. Right? <laughs> and so, the, and then the you learn sh- a lot about your kids on a photo shoot. <laughs> well, and you, the shot that actually, Actually took place there is my daughter laughing and me rubbing my <laughs> eyes like this like and and my wife cracking up and so and again it was a shot that wasn't anywhere planned one anywhere in the in the deal but you know i thought well oh, you know that it really tells the story exactly. of our family sometimes and so again a good photographer can pull that information out uh and use it to their benefit mm-hmm. Especially when you're dealing with a kid, because a kid you're going to talk to. I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, dad, I need you to turn this way and look up this way or tilt your chin down or whatever, or look at your wife. And, you know, we're instant at following those kind of things. Sure. With a kid, you've got to, they've got to have a buy in, right. right? It's almost a little bit different than you, you say that, but I would tell you that the adults 99% yeah. of the time are a much buy bigger issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get the dad to buy. Yeah. Look at the beer over exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I, like, and I can cue them all day long and they'll, they'll do a rote referral of that cue but to get the to pull the actual like legit laughter out and to pull that legit moment out when they're dressed in something they're not comfortable in they were fighting to get in the car they maybe didn't have time to eat beforehand and so everybody's hangry Mm. and all that kind of stuff well those are all things that i have to deal with at every single shoot and so i will bring the tension level down and i'm gonna make you laugh i dare you (laughs) throw a chicken wing at me or something man i'll do tricks for you all day long i have this pig that makes this like horrendous squeak and (laughs) i put it between my knees and when i shoot i squeeze it and it like the fact that it's like down around my my, between between my knees and then and then I'm shooting like the dads cannot not laugh right. and then it makes this like like yeah. this horrible noise and then I get this like legit laughter out of him and I'm like see you didn't think you were going to get it yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. didn't show up didn't show up at the shoot today yes. thinking I was going to hear some horrible pig squeal <laughs> exactly. in there and now I like ceremoniously when I train a photographer like they are bestowed their pig like nice. that is it's a thing now <laughs> nice choose where you're going to squeeze it at yes. but you're going to squeeze this pig all right so services so i initially seen and i I guess i'm gonna i'm gonna squeeze two of these in at the same time so i got services and we're gonna we're gonna move blog up the up the shoot here okay so in the blog that i was looking at on your website that you were doing one of the things you talked about is you talked about wedding right Mm -hmm. doing weddings being pregnant like in that moment like this is probably the last place i want to be i definitely don't want to portray this and need to kind of regroup and regather myself and doing that kind of stuff 
So services for you, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. And I think this is kind of the other piece of, of this part of the business that is never really, if you do it really well, it's never seen by your customers mm-hmm. is doesn't matter what kind of day you're having. You got to like whiteboard erase this bad boy and we got to start fresh right here with this person. And, and I got to be on my game yeah. right when I Every get time. out of here. So uh, and that's really in any moment, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's that wedding that you're talking about, whether it's, you know, just this thing is just going sideways in a quick hurry. Mm-hmm. You have to be the voice of reason and you also have to be, you have to be the person that can refocus everything yeah. back to what we're here for and what right. we're trying to do. So services. So let's talk about you do graduation portraits, mm-hmm. birth portraits, mm-hmm. and really I mean, you got a lot on there. I could probably sit here and name off like 50 <laughs> different things that you do. What we've said is if it if it's a turning point in the story of your family, then it needs to be photographed. Yeah. So if somebody's getting married, graduating, having a baby, whatever's happening, or even just turning five or turn, you know, it's yeah. birthday, it's or it's your annual family portrait to document what we've what we've survived this year right. or whatever yeah. it is. And um you know, like whatever it is, then we need to photograph it. And so, um, we have over time hit every box we have hit weddings. We've hit births. I actually like when they say she wrote the birth, the book on birth photography, you can look on Amazon. I literally wrote the book on birth photography. Yeah, (laughs) I saw your picture on there that actually made that deal and you were holding it. I think you you had, did you have an iPad or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, I mean, literally any time that your family is changing and having a life changing moment is really where we have become accustomed to taking professional photographs. Um, and now in the age of social media, really any day is a day to take photographs of any sort. Sure. Um, but those are really like the key points where you're going to look to hiring a professional rather than doing it on your phone at this point. Um, and so we have over the years done our best to make sure that like all of the intricacies of that genre mm-hmm. we have nailed down mm-hmm. so that we can include it in the offering so that we are your lifetime photographer. We yeah. are the person I'm literally have families that I have been in the delivery with room with them as they had their baby. And then, you know, a year after year we do their annual portraits and then like, I mean, I have, I have some families that have been present for all three of the births of their children. And so, um, it's crazy because, with that, being able to de-escalate a situation, being able to be concerned with the safety of a client, and that's a soapbox that I can get into. Yeah. <laughs> all another, oh, you yeah. know, train tracks and and side of the road and yeah. glass and like all the things that make me angry as a as a professional. Um, but the my clients have come to value me as a part of their team. Yeah. And I have I have one client that I was there from the minute I was there for the birth of their first child. They they send out a monthly like series of pictures of like, this is the kid's 42nd month of life. Here are the pictures. I get those every month. I'm on the grandparents like nice. text thread. Yeah. And, um, and they, they literally this year were like, so can we just pay you a big lump sum? And we have two sessions a year for life. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sure we can work something. <laughs> if I win the lottery, so, can you travel with us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, and now we do offer concierge, um, you know, yeah. vacation portraits. Yeah, and we're so gonna talk about that. literally we will like, we want to be that team member that's documenting your family. And so I was actually at a birth, I think a year ago. And, um, and because, you know, like those things, when you're in a delivery room, like things stick in your mind, it's just a different type of environment where like details stick in your mind. And, uh, and the couple was having a conversation while she was like Pitocin, she getting her Pitocin or whatever. And, and he was like, what happened with, with the last baby with this, that, and whatever. And, and he looks up, he goes, I don't know, ask the family historian over there. And I was like, well, actually, and <laughs> I like, I knew right off the bat, like, well, the last time we were in here, da, 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 da happened. And this yeah. doctor came in and then da, 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 you know, like, but most of the time I sit quietly in the corner, but <laughs> uh, listen, as a photographer, I think this is one of the things. And if you are in the business or if you are thinking about starting the business, so I'm going to give you, uh, I'll give you a personal story. I'll try and make this quick here but you can be a part of a family Mm -hmm. for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's what people miss in this particular part of the industry. So my, I was telling you, my wife and I were getting ready to celebrate 25 years and, and the photographer that took our photos does not sit in a positive light with us, even though 
this happened 25 years ago. We still talk to, you know, we still tell people all the time. Now, this guy ain't in business anymore either, yeah. fortunately for a lot of people. Uh, but we were pressed. We did, again, kind of that same deal. There was no such thing as social media when we got mm-hmm. married. You know, so it was looking around. We're in San Antonio trying to, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of photographers. And we're not sure who to go with. So we go with this guy. It seems pretty legit. And he shows up and he takes our pictures and we get our pictures at our wedding. But by between the time that he gets pictures at wedding to our reception, he's managed to get himself drunk and he's managed to bring a lot of business cards with him that he is handing out at our reception, you know? So this is, this is the memory that gets left with us, you know, like, Hey, 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 you know, here's a business card if you ever want to do business. So, Good, bad, and ugly, right? Yeah. But at that same point, where that birth for that birth portrait, trying to say that fast, uh, that birth portrait's on the wall, and somebody walks in ten years, fifteen years, mm-hmm. twenty years down the road, and that mom is still talking about that photo yeah. and still referencing that photography yeah. person or business. And if you've done a really good job, it's person, yeah. right? They don't view it. They don't sit there and look at it as, Oh, figment photography right. did it for me. They go, Ashley did that for mm-hmm. me. Right. And you're almost on a, a first name basis. Absolutely. And it becomes like you had said earlier, you're almost a part of that family mm-hmm. through that moment yeah. and through that moment that you create. And then you create lots more moments that are behind there. So it can be good, bad, and ugly depending yeah. on what it looks like. Uh, and and they, how you conduct yourself. Yeah. And yeah. They, yeah. And they can definitely carry it forward for a long time. Cause mm-hmm. I know at 50, we'll probably still be talking about that photographer, mm-hmm. but you know, in building your business and building your group, then it also becomes valuable for who it is that you build into your business. Like you want unique people in your business. And one of the things that I've learned is I don't necessarily need people around me that are all like me. I oh, don't yes. want, you know, I need that. I need that mixture of people, but I know that there are core values that I'm going to carry and I need them to be able to work within those core values, but I need the uniqueness of individuals in that business. Absolutely. Uh, And each person will bring something that will make us more and more stable Mm -hmm. and better, better as a business. Right. So we bring these people into the business and you're kind of doing that same thing in building your group. And then that also can extend your services. Mm-hmm. So kind of like we're talking about Reagan as an example mm-hmm. of that, where she's doing the videography part, yep. you know, and it can extend these parts of your business out to give better, better rounded. I guess that's kind of the word I'm yeah. looking for. I guess better rounded services yeah. for people and even moving into veins that maybe right now nobody is even doing. That's not a thing that will eventually become a thing. I like Instaland. So yes. and we'll get to that. Uh, Teaser. It's yeah, coming. there you go, man. I'm, I'm building up to this here. So uh, travel. Well, yeah. let's back that down because that's going to kind of go into the other side as well, too. The Let's talk about certifications, mm-hmm. why it's important, mm-hmm. and why you think from your perspective of this, why should clients be looking for that when they're looking to select a photographer? Well, first of all, most people don't know there are certifications right. and degrees in the photo world. Um, and so that's definitely like a client education piece that we try to at least portray on our website. Um, and then if anybody asks, we're more than welcome, we're more than happy to talk about it. Um, the photography is an industry with that at the moment, because of the emergence of technology has an incredibly low barrier to entry. And so you can go buy a camera and put up a Facebook page and you can be a photographer. Exactly. Um, and so the, the certification and why I was interested in pursuing it was to differentiate myself in the photo world, the more you can be, I, when I teach photographers, I teach kind of on the national circuit. Um, I say, this needs to be your banana factor in when people are comparing apples to apples, Mm. you need to be able to be a banana. And so this is one of the things, um, a, you know, making images that you're not seeing on everybody else's pages, offering something like birth photography that, you know, requires a decent amount of like management of all the players involved because you're going in and working on somebody else's turf in a medical facility and you need permissions and, and need to conduct yourself professionally, et cetera. Um, and, and certification is one of those banana factors that, um, basically what it is, is it's a two part process and they've changed it a bit since I received mine. But, um, when I did it, it was, it's a written exam that's proctored somewhere in your area, or you have to go have it proctored somewhere, um, on the technical side of lighting and technicals of photography. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then it's a portfolio review that shows that you know how to execute certain things. So when people say, can you get that blurry background for me? Like when everything in, you know, the person's sharp and everything's blurry in the background, that's like a depth of field thing and right. how your aperture is set. And so all of those technical things you have to display in a portfolio review. And so you have to submit images that fit certain criteria. And then they say, okay, you have demonstrated to us that you understand all of these technical things about studio lighting and, and natural lighting and, um, you know, the science of photography. Mm -hmm. And so it is a technical certification first and foremost. Um, the other credential that I hold is a um, photographic craftsman, which is actually a teaching certification um, through Professional Photographers of America basically just says that I taught a lot of classes to other photographers that were legitimate enough where they gave me enough credits to say that. There is a third certification that is a master of photography that is earned through merits of um, competition prints. Mm. So you enter competitions and they are judged and then you earn your merits or not. And once you get a certain amount of pieces that have passed muster, then you are a deemed a master of photographer. Um, because I've been building five companies, I have not had time to compete in a few years. So that's on my list down the way to make sure I go for the trifecta. Oh, no, oh bless. <laughs> um, but that is, that is definitely like, that's more the art certification side as opposed right. to the teaching or the technical. Um, and so I carry two of those three and, um, and then they've actually added others to those, those baseline three that they've had for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when it's, when you're looking for a photographer, it, what the certification tells you is that it, especially in weddings to me, because in a wedding you are moving around so many different locations in, you know, you've got the bridal suite, you've got the ceremony space, you've got the reception space, you've got the cocktail space, you got wherever they're taking out you out to do your portraits. Every one of those spots has different lighting. Right. And if your photographer doesn't know how to handle lighting, mm -hmm. then you're in for a hot mess. Oh, and yeah it's such a you get what you pay for Wait industry. Wait a minute, you mean the auto setting doesn't just fix all that? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and there's some venues, and there's some venues in this town that have different color bulbs in every room. Right. And you have to be able to know how to handle that. And if you can't, then your client's not going to be happy. And yeah. so you as a client, when you're going to search for somebody, it's just another way that you can kind of whittle down and narrow down and know that you're going to be happy with the product that you get on the, end of the, on the other side. Because at the end of the day, especially in a wedding setting, and then a birth, that's a whole nother beast. But um, the only things you walk away from with your wedding, you walk away with three things, your husband or spouse, your partner, your ring <laughs> and your photos. Like yeah. that's it. And yeah. so why would you not spend a little bit more for the, like the only tangible thing that you're going to walk away right. from to be done right and to be done professionally and to know that you're going to walk away having had a good experience with that person. You're not feuding with them over whatever, because it, I mean, I'm in a photographer's legal group and I see every feud that a bride is having with mm. a photographer and how that, you know, what that can do to your brand yeah, and what it can sure. do to your clients. And so again, yeah. that word of mouth and everything else that goes along with that, yeah. you know, that you get to earn out of, uh, you're either front side work that you did mm -hmm. and, and compensated for or the back side where you're reactionary yes. to it and you're probably going to find that reacting to things that you didn't research or right. didn't know about probably going to make it more to, more challenging for you to produce yes. good quality final images. And then let me just put a disclaimer out there for anybody considering <laughs> hiring a birth or boudoir photographer. Mm. <laughs> my my partner, my former studio partner is a world-class boudoir photographer. And she said, um, is this really an experience you want associated with the word cheap? Mm. Because with that value comes security mm -hmm. that those photos are not going to end up in the wrong hands. Sure. And you need to, and so the more that certification shows that your photographer is educating themselves to put you in the safest possible position. Yeah. And it's not going to put you on a train track and it's not going to put you out on the side of the road. And it's not going to put your boudoir images onto an unsecured website to transfer them and yeah. things like that. So yeah, the more, the more you can weed out somebody because they're not taking steps to improve themselves, mm -hmm. the better situation you are going to be in as a client. Yeah. And that's obviously very specialized and specialized down to the point that you don't want, you know, you're probably not putting those up on Facebook Correct. and all the other stuff. So, you know, again, so certifications, you know, kind of reflect time invested mm -hmm. knowledge base mm -hmm. And really what you're getting in the long run there. Like these are not just, you know, hey, here's your here's your certification from the Cracker Jack box that Correct. I found and you're good to go. You right. know, so you've obviously invested time and show that. So again, somebody that's out in the market looking for that 
can definitely ask those questions yes. about those certifications, finding out if they're in place. Doesn't necessarily mean the person's a terrible photographer. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're a great photographer. Right. It just yeah. means, you know, I've shown commitment to my craft here Correct. to to hone what it is that I do and what right. my business is offering to you. And again, a value meaning, mm-hmm. you know, I've invested all this time over here and pricing is over here right. to show value over here for what I'm doing. Correct. So, and, and it also I'm, means because in order to maintain it, you have to maintain your membership with the professional organizations, yeah. which are then offering other, you know, educational opportunities. And so it's just, it's a signal that they're trying to continuously learn and improve. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's back up to travel. <laughs> so, cause this is going to crack open the egg for the other, <laughs> the other places where you have your, your, oh, your toes <laughs> and the hands in the water and everything else. So travel. So for some people who are maybe going on family vacation, mm-hmm. uh, they're looking at a destination, uh, and they want to document that. Okay. So in some cases we were talking before we came on air that that becomes a big challenge for people who are going to a location that they're not familiar with. In mm-hmm. most cases, they're not familiar with businesses in there. They maybe don't have connections to people who can do solid referrals or get somebody in line to be yeah. able to do whatever that looks like. It could be a beachfront shoot. It could be, you know, a, on a, campus here. Yeah. Or I mean, yeah. whatever that looks like that destination is really, most people are doing destination shoots are looking to tell a story, whether that's historical, mm-hmm. meaning something that they came from, or it's a special moment that they're marking within their right. lifetime that they want to ensure that they get. This now cracks it open and opens up to the opportunity of which business now? So Vacanva. Okay. Vacanva is our tourism-based portrait brand. So we say a curated portrait experience on the go. Um, so when we went to the beach a couple of years ago, we, um, we asked around because it's a popular beach for other people who had been there, who had had their portraits done, if they had any referrals, but majority of the time when you're traveling, that referral base doesn't exist. And so you don't know people right. who have used a business down there before. Um, and we found a good photographer and, um, if we went down there, I'd probably use her again. However, the system of, the, there wasn't a, you know, I, I do a very in-depth design consultation. That wasn't really a thing. It was like, who's going to be there? What time do you want to do it? Um, and you know, wardrobe planning and, um, how we get the images on the back end and what format are we getting the images on the back end? It was all left to like a PDF price menu. Mm. And, um, and you know, that's fine, but it's not the level that we are used to serving our, our clients. We do, I mean, we do home design, like what, what frame works best for your decor. Let's show it to you virtually on your own wall before we ever order it. Um, and not that I necessarily like demand that level of service from every other photographer I interact with. And and frankly, we use a different photographer every year and to try to get like this whole collection of all different artists that shoot us. Um, but most of them are peers that were doing it on trade or something, but this, I was, you know, hiring out of the Google I, I went world. to the Googles yeah. and was like, Hey, the Google world. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and so I was, I was left a little lackluster with the experience of like, here's a PDF. What do you want? And then we'll get them to you when we get them to you. Mm. And, um, to me, the, the ability to go on vacation and know you're going to get that high end service and experience is, is a situation that a lot of people are finding themselves in, especially now everybody's international travel got canceled. And so they're traveling more in the state right. and, um, and figuring out what tourism looks like as we come out of all of this crazy. And, you know, of course we were, we were about to launch and, and, uh, March of 2020. And we were like, let's put a pin in that while mm-hmm. there is zero tourism. And it just, died and we'll just wait a little bit longer. Um, and so we decided to build this brand where we partner with a lot of the places that people love to shoot here in town, um, and be their go-to people so that if people are coming into town, they can put right on their website, like while you're, while you're visiting us at, um, the cotton gin, then, you know, have your family portraits done here and we can be right on their website. And then when they come through our website, we have these 15 locations around town that we've partnered with who, um, we can say, you know, what is your style? Are you more, let's go to the vineyard people. Are you more like the big pecan trees at royalty or, um, base camp farms? We, we do a ton of at base camp farms and she like for a whole four months, she rotates sunflower crops. And so we do sunflowers out there or we're at a Tonkway ranch doing our blue bonnets all the time. So like we, we have now built these very intensive relationships with all of these different locations, century square. What is your vibe? Stella mm. hotel, a hotel, like 
where, what, what type of feel do you want out of your photos? So that like, regardless of what your style is and what's going to fit in your decor, we have a relationship with a space that can offer that if you're it exists. You're here. still back to storytelling as well too here. Like 100%. we're kind of talking about like, what story are you wanting yes. to tell? So that then you can kind of, again, match that person up to what's going to work well for them. And a lot of those families want to shoot on campus. Mm. And so that's their story because they're coming into College Station because they want to shoot on campus. Um, And we've actually built a partnership with athletics. And so we, we, this last, um, in the fall, because so many of the ticket holders were not able to have the full football experience, we offered them Kyle Field family sessions. And like we had a weekend where you could pick your time slot and we were out on Kyle Field doing family sessions there. So we are really intensively creating these partnerships with different managed facilities where when you're coming into Bryan College Station and you're like, our whole family is going to be there because we're tailgating. We might Mm -hmm. as well get a family portrait out of it. Let's have this whole experience. And it's not just like somebody grab a phone and everybody stand here and threaten your children. It's actually a legitimate fun experience. And so, um, to us, this is a scalable model. And so as we've been training up and getting our infrastructure in place where we have a client manager who's doing all your design consultation and ordering appointments um, via Zoom before you ever come into town and after you've after you've left, so you're not having to worry about all that during your vacation and we're not having to try to get you back in to make sure you see all the samples and all that kind of stuff. Like you don't want to be doing that while you're on, there, on your trip. Right. Let's do that later. Um, Front side. Yes. Try and front side everything. And if we have generations, we have multi-generations, then mm. I don't want grandma having to try to figure out, like, how, which one, what does that family want and what does that family want and trying to, like, all put it all in one big order. We'll do separate ordering appointments for everybody. Like, however you want to do it, we'll make it work and right. we'll, we can make it very easy for you. Um, and so we've spent the last year really honing all those systems and, like, overcoming all those hurdles to make sure it is a very streamlined system and that you're getting that like white glove service so that like when you fill out the information on our website, you're getting an immediate response where you can book your consultation. You get on with Carly. She hand holds you through the whole process. Here's what we recommend everybody wear. And it's not a difficult process to get it. I promise somebody has this in their closet already, that kind of thing. Um, If you want to shop, you can, but like we don't put you in a situation where now you have to like clothe 15 people out of nowhere. Um, And, and we take you through like, what is your style? So which location is going to be best? And here's when they can accommodate you. And here's when our photographer can accommodate you that's during your trip and it all lines up. And then once it's done and our editor has finished them, then she'll get back on and she'll help you select the best ones and where it goes and what it does. And so now we can really do that anywhere because that's centralized and it's web-based and it's, um, you know, it's, it's easily accessible. And one thing Corona actually did for us was it trained people on zoom. So this is not a novel concept for the average person anymore. And so, well, and if you think about, uh, I mean, I'm going to plan a vacation somewhere. I already have some things in mind that I'm going to do, but mm-hmm. if I can incorporate this in as a part of the experience, yes then again it's and not a chore yeah, but actually yeah, a fun experience you know, i mean yeah. that, that it becomes hey we're gonna go here and mm-hmm. then the family's excited about that destination location yes. and on this day we're gonna meet here right. and this is where we're gonna do a photo session again keeping in mind like if i'm booking my family i'm going okay i need whatever 30 minutes an hour hour and a half depending on what it is that i'm trying to accomplish mm-hmm. I thought it was unique that you were talking about the ability to virtually show people uh, in their own home. Mm -hmm. Like you you said, take a picture of your fireplace or whatever wall this is going to go on. And then we can kind of also reflect that as to what it's going to look like before you even get to that moment. So you have a good idea of what it is that we're wanting to do in this particular situation. And it's almost like a future look, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 a future look into something before I get 100% fully invested as right. well as a part of that pre-work, again, yes. that you're doing, that consultation that you're sitting up and trying to make sure that everybody's on the same page here. It's real easy when you're running the business to know what page you're on, right. but you want to make sure that the other part Bring of the that, client along. Yeah, that they <laughs> yes. kind of, they, they baby step through this process too. So it's not, you don't want stress in that. Mm-hmm. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you've under communicated, yes. if not anything, we're over communicating. And then the planning process through all of that to kind of walk that through that I'm not sitting out there. If I go and I try and do an on, you know, on location photographer that really to the point of what you made earlier, I want to go back and, and, and touch on that. You talked about using the, the Google photographer, right? Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden you really kind of, I know who I'm getting based on star review, right? Facebook feedback, stuff like that. 
but I'm not local. Right. Right. And now all of a sudden, if, if I'm not in their backyard, well, maybe that doesn't matter to that photographer. Maybe it's not any of the other. I'm never going to see this person again. So what does it matter? And right. they don't get invested in that process because they're not local because right. they're not sitting out there potentially as a negative influence right. locally that can influence a lot of other people in the community. So again, something to keep in mind and consider in that, that you want that photographer that's invested in you as the client not just for the purpose of money exchange, right. but for the purpose of the experience. Again, yes. you're paying really for the experience than you are for anything else. Absolutely. And that's really what sets that apart in that part. So let's, uh, so the Canva, they Canva yes. I keep wanting to go. The, I know. And, and I, once again, <laughs> my track record of naming things is just going yeah. so beautifully, but I, I actually mean, I crowdsource that yeah, vacation I, I, canvas. Yeah, like it's, yeah. No, I get it. It I looks totally, really pretty on the logo. <laughs> I, I see where you're going with that. So you, you probably, this is something that we're still a little down the road on as far as yeah. going real full blown sure. once everything kind of opens back up again. We're building the infrastructure now in DFW. Yep. Um, so we have our destination curator, Sydney. She um, lives in Dallas now. She actually used to work for the tourism department here in Bryan awesome. College Station. So she has relationships with all the people here. And now she's also spent a year working for Visit Dallas and, and had built all those relationships before they had to furlough everybody. Yeah. And so she's actually building out all of our infrastructure for the DFW market. And then uh, one of my, my former studio partner and my education director, Megan, she just bought a house in Galveston. So we're starting to, to tentacle out. Places. Yes, yeah. it's getting there. Um, and our infrastructure now um, having our, our remote client manager and our editor all ready to go, um, we can start to really pour gasoline on the fire. So, awesome. Yeah. So something to look for forward to down the future yeah. but at the moment we can do concierge so literally we will send somebody wherever you're vacationing oh well i mean yeah let me know when that comes around i'm so, here for that yeah you know, <laughs> I, I might take on a 1099 for you kind of work <laughs> on the other side or something uh so let's before i get to the last one we're going to go to a diamond Mm -hmm. Okay, so A Diamond, we kind of might have lost a little bit. I, we had a very quick mention on it, but A Diamond Productions mm -hmm. is more so your business side, meaning commercial photography to commercial, right? Yeah. So talk just a little bit about that, and then we're going to end on the last one, which is the one that... I well, think we still have to talk about our fundraiser program. Oh, that's right. Yes, because that's we'll really the most important thing. We'll end on that one, because <laughs> okay. I think that's probably Perfect. one of the most important things. So. Um, yeah, so... Um, sorry, what did... We're talking about a, a diamond, diamond production. Productions. Yes, right. so a diamond productions is our um, is our commercial line. So basically, if you're a company and you're trying to sell something, we're going to create images for your website that are going to make that happen. We're going to strategize it. We're going to make it for real your estate brand. construction. So real estate's a little bit of a different beast because most of the time, yes, for your branding, absolutely. Right. For your headshots, for your team, for all that kind of stuff, we do a ton of that. And, um, but as far as like MLS listings, I am definitely not going to be the most, most economical choice. Right. And so I, I, I regularly refer out MLS listing okay. photos. Um, however, the fine art pieces for the really high end listings, that's a different story. Yep. So we um, will pull out the drone and light from the drone and shoot from the ground and like do it really do it right. right um and and do it in a way that literally like i only know three other people in the country that drone light paint the yeah. way that we do it um and then uh but I mean, you can look at traditions, pool and landscapes. You can look at, there's a bunch of different, um, all the headshots we've done for Hill, Hillier funeral homes. Mm -hmm. Um, we've worked a lot with Easterwood airport. We've worked a lot with a lot of the larger companies in town. Um, and so we, we really will sit down and have a planning, like what are your ultimate goals here? What is it that you're trying to sell? What is your message to your, to your company or to your client, to, right. to your perfect client. Yep. And how can we create image, the images that not only portray that to your client, but also work with the actual like copy messaging that you're trying to put out. And where is this going to appear? Is it just for your website? Is it for your Facebook ads? Is it mm -hmm. for like, where is it going to be? And make sure that it's really telling the proper messaging. Yeah. Story. Headshots and things like that. These are things that are going to follow you for a while. They're yes. things that are going to keep you relevant to your, you know, basically right in front of your clients that are there. You've got the opportunity to bring headshots in somewhere where they can mm -hmm. actually like be in a professional atmosphere, mm -hmm. backdrop, all mm -hmm. the other stuff that they need in order to create that. Whether that's for use, uh, maybe it's just that I'm going to have you print it so I can put it on a wall in my sure. office. Or realistically, it's probably going to a website, mm -hmm. to a Facebook page, to something professional to set up to show. So pretty much most of the needs on the on the commercial side you guys can come to 
to yeah. match up with or can do a referral in order to be able to get them that best opportunity. We're and, never going to send you away and be like, mm, we can't do that. And we don't know anybody. Right. Well. <laughs> yeah. You're still, yeah. You're still point of contact in that regardless of where Correct. you're at with it. And so uh, let's go to Instaland. Okay. All right. So this is the one. This is probably the one that's gotten the most traction here as of recent. It yeah, seems. in the last couple of weeks we've yeah. been on the, on the I, news. Yeah, because I mean, you like this just literally started. I mean, you haven't been doing this for a very long time, Correct. and so Instaland. When I did some research in on this, this was one that was very unique for me. I'm, I'm, go, I'm, I'm right. not going to use the word boomer. No, but no, no, no. Uh, I mean, I'm right there with you. Like I'm, I'm what. Uh, Eliza Schlesinger named her special elder millennial. Yeah. And yeah, I know I'm there. I like that word. Yes. That's good. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like something Technically, that I'm in the millennial space, yeah. but I'm 34. So like, I'm not, you know. Makes it sound like I belong in like a Lord of the Rings <laughs> series or something. But yeah, so, so Instaland is uh, really unique to the Bryan College Station area. Yes. And, and rightfully so, because it's named Instaland BCS, right? Yes. Uh, so I want you to talk a little bit about it. If you're just now hearing about it, we're going to tell you where you can kind of go and look at some of this stuff. Cause this stuff actually started popping up on my Facebook feed from some of my friends who were going there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, what is this? Like I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, where, where are they at? Yeah. You know? And so again, it was kind of, it spoke almost to the point of going to your website. Like the first thing that pops up in there, it's a very <laughs> unique that is a stock image, I will tell you. <laughs> I know, but I mean, it's a It's very, like a tattooed Santa Claus leaping through the yeah, air. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it's unique from the idea of something that I hadn't seen. And then my friends are putting pictures up that they've gone there and and, and been one of your clients sure. that's run through there. And I'm like, wow, where are they at? And then you start digging and doing a little bit more research in it. They're doing it and pushing it off their pages. So I want you to talk a little bit about Instaland. I want you to, uh, first off, we'll talk about what it is. Because mm-hmm. we've kind of left some people hanging out here sure. and discussing it. Since you and I both know what it is. Uh, talk about what it is. I want you to talk also about where the concept came from sure. for it. And then what you see future-wise for this as a part of the industry, because it yeah. really is almost like its own little entity in the industry. Here, yeah, so. it's funny. My uh, my former studio partner, Megan, we were texting about it, and she was like, I mean, if you can't beat them, monetize them. Yeah, <laughs> so, right, exactly. So, um, Insulina is what is called, what is referred to in the industry as a selfie museum, which um, has taken different forms in different cities, but mm-hmm. really up until really, very recently has only been in the larger cities. Um, and basically some of them are more immersive. They're multi-room spaces Mm -hmm. where each room has a different experience. Um, ours, we are one big room and we've got six different sets. Um, and so we, we had to build it to be, excuse me, very very Corona friendly from the inset. Yep. Now I will tell you this podcast may, I believe is supposed to hit in early March. And at the yeah. moment we are only committed as a two month pop-up January, February. Right. So by the time you hear this, we may be gone, but we are seeing how it goes and yeah. we're considering extending it. So look us up now that you're hearing it. And yeah. if we're still there, come see us. I know we were talking about whether we should discuss it or not. No, really no, no. A lot of this is basing. It's also, about business strategy. Yeah. So yeah, you want to see, you really haven't seen this yet. Right. At the student level, right? right? Like no, the students aren't back yet right. as we're, at the time that we're recording this. Right. So um, next week we'll really see kind of the the change in what the town looks like with right. with the students here, but also in the this second semester of back during COVID. Yeah. And so I don't, nobody knows yeah. what that's going to look like, um, and and how that's going to change what businesses are doing right now, but. Um, what a selfie museum is, is basically a space that you can come in and pay for a ticket Mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time. In our case, it's $10 for 20 minutes. And Mm -hmm. you can take as many pictures of you and or your friends um, as you would like in that time slot. We have built it around COVID protocols where um, we keep our, our per person per footage, yep. you know, so we only sell 10 tickets per time slot. Mm-hmm. Um, and v- you are also more than welcome to buy out a time slot. So you're just in there with the people that you are already shared oxygen with. Right. Um, and, and we've, it's also now going to be a very, um, easy way for a lot of the student organizations to get an event cleared through the university mm. that it's COVID friendly because they're all having to submit every event that they do right. through this like body of Tracing approval. And yeah. And so, um, what we have done is we have custom built six sets 
my my amazing marketing director, Carla Ponder, she is now also our lead set designer because we're just throwing around titles now because right, we man. keep building stuff. Um, and she's an incredible crafter. And um, so this January sets, we, um, we were making, she handmade 218 clay donuts. And I have this donut wall and we have this paper flower wall and we build clouds, like 3D clouds that you can yeah. like hide behind and they light up and, um, and we've got neon signs and we've got um, Georgia from Base Camp Farms built a dried flower set and she's going to be doing another one for February and uh, and then for February we've also pub- partnered with the Bull Balloon Girls and they're bringing in a shimmer wall and like a balloon garland and like this whole thing so um, people can come in take as many pictures as they want we have selfie tripods available you can bring your selfie stick you can just shoot each other shoot your friends shoot yourself what however you want to do it um and we've it's been a really interesting uh social experiment yeah yeah definitely <laughs> because we are seeing um we had an influencer day as our soft open so mm-hmm. we invited a lot of the people with very large instagram accounts to come and and have their own time and enjoy it and post away um and the amount of movement we saw on our instagram account from that was bonkers yeah um and so we're studioing out of the back of that space at the moment. So when we have headshots and headshot days, we're in the space. So people are able to see it, but we have our like actual studio set in the back as well. Um, and then the rest of the time it's at Century Square. Um, a lot of people are coming and doing their insulin experience and then going and having lunch there or having a drink there or going to the candy store or whatever. So it's been great partnership with Century Square. Um, so at the moment we're a two month pop-up. Like I said, if it goes well, we will, extend it we're changing out the sets monthly and we'll see how it goes but it's been really fun yeah the monthly set deal was going to be the thing i was going to ask you about because again it's like you know i i envision this being something like i could totally see like girls night out oh 100 and then they're down in century square maybe they go eat or whatever and hey let's go over here and let's check this out Absolutely. and let's run that direction or whatever or if it's something where you're again just trying to get something to put up on a social media page yes. or just something a little you can fun bank or content, yeah, yeah. Like somebody's birthday, somebody's what you know. I mean, there's so many different avenues that come out of this, and the uniqueness of those sets. I mean, no two are alike. I yes. mean, they're not even close to each no. other. And so I've watched some of my friends go there and get their pictures taken in different spots. And and again, it's it's one of those deals. I'll kind of refer to it again back to your website is when I'm flipping through my Facebook and looking through stuff, it was a picture that just was unique from mm-hmm. everything else. Right. And you stop and you go, what was that? And you roll back to it and you're like, well, what is this Instagram BCS mm-hmm. deal going on here? So totally can see, I mean, the name's awesome. I like, hey, the, I like the fact that you got the name there. You talked about all these other names and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think this one you probably did. Right? So even though <laughs> I'm, I'm not, even though we I'm wanted not it a, to like say kind of what it was. But <laughs> listen, the only place that I influence people is in my household. And so I, I'm definitely not on Instagram influencing anybody, but you know, it is, it is one of those things that it is the first thing you kind of think towards when you're looking at it but you got a picture in there of of an older couple mm-hmm. I, I mean oh it's fun for all ages oh yeah and i saw yeah. i mean i saw them posted up on there and then again the comments are just like uh, people ha- lost their minds oh my gosh it's like yeah. hashtag relationship goals you yes. know i mean it's just a little bit of everything oh these people are so sweet and yes. i love this and you know so again it's it's one image mm-hmm. just like anything else that can be viral uh, that can go viral, that can set up a completely different avenue for this company to be able to grow and expand, but also change on the fly too. That yeah. it's not like, oh yeah, I did that last month. You know, right. oh, here's 30 days. Now we're in for another, you know, another right. set change or whatever. So you get this opportunity. Oh, we have to start ordering for the next month immediately. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, and the time invested. I mean, if you oh, yeah. look at what's been put into it, and you know. You were talking about who was the one that built the, the dry flower set? Carla. Yeah. Oh, Car- uh, Georgia with Basecamp yeah. Farms. Yeah. So there's uh, 700 dried flower stems, all real, yeah. all locally grown. Yeah. Yeah. And this isn't like just throw these up on the wall no, and no. be done with it. You no. know? So, I mean, there's obviously been time invested in that as well, too. But it's also that cross partnership that you're working with other businesses yes. as well, too, to get their product line out right. and to also get it in front of, I mean, they build this, they build this particular studio portion, this, this set, mm-hmm. so to say. Uh, and then now all of a sudden they're 
virtually at the expense of donating, I guess, that in or whatever, are now seeing their product line showing up in people's Instagrams Absolutely. and Facebook pages and everything else. So, again, this is something that, you know, I think there's so many different avenues that can run from this. I'm sure you've already thought about all this because <laughs> you know, I'm not the guy to tell you how to do Instagram or Instagram. The minute or Insta somebody anything. came in and said, is this a franchise you bought or is this just you? And my husband was like, don't say that to her. Don't say that yeah. to her. Don't say that to yeah. her. Like, she's going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, and you're, you're going in a line of something, I mean, a selfie museum. Yeah. Right? I mean, listen again. I'm not using the word boomer here. Honey, but, you know, I'm with, selfie I, museum, and I'm like, that's where we are now. I know. We're a selfie museum. I know. Like, uh, like, my husband's like, you're doing what? And I was like, I, I'm still wrapping my brain around yeah. it. Like, I get it. But then I see what, what's killers is I've been training my team to take over, like, running the front desk there. Um, and as I'm training them, and people are coming in, and you hear the squeals of laughter. Oh, yeah. And you realize how long it's been since we've had to put on makeup, put on a cute outfit and go have like fun. Yeah. Just go have fun somewhere out in yeah. a commercial space. Right. And, and so my neighbor who's going to be working there some, she, she, she heard that squeal of laughter and she looked at me and she goes, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. And like, I come back to every time, like we're just in the business of joy. Like that's really what our whole company is about. We're in the business of creating a moment that gives you that emotional hit of joy. Yeah. Like we're in the serotonin business, you know, like we're, and so if we can create it, whatever that looks like, and I, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of photographers who are like, they're taking phones, with, pictures with their own phones. And I'm like, they're doing it anyway. Figure out a way yeah. to make it work. Yeah. Capitalize on yeah. it. Yeah. And let's, so let's be on the front side of what they're doing. And already. how do we make jobs out of that? And yeah. how do we make partnerships with other businesses out of that? And, you know, uh, George is one of our, um, our Vacanva destinations at, at, um, uh, Bay Canva and or at Base Camp Farms and Century Square is one of our Bay Canva destinations and and then Bubbaloon helped us like with our grand opening and then they were like well we have the shimmer wall let's do that here and so we just how can we all come together to overcome this craziness yeah. that happened for this last yeah, year? The, no the networking that can happen through this business could be crazy right. I mean really I mean and it can obviously grow from where it's at right now you're yeah. talking about the different sets that you have but I mean if it's brand based mm -hmm. and really brand based around especially local businesses yes. and things that you can get out there again it's a partnership that works both ways right you know when we were talking about it and you're saying you know my goal as a business owner is to create joy mm -hmm. is to create that experience is to create that excitement and we were talking about each of these businesses before we came on air and i said you know they all encompass the photography business kind of as the center core and then they kind of move out into their own entity from mm -hmm. that there's still that at the base mm -hmm. it's still the it's still the nucleus i guess of that whole deal yeah. and now i'm really talking in some big words no i'm there I, with you i don't honestly <laughs> think i've used the word nucleus <laughs> <laughs> Maybe since high school. So this is a university town, my friend. I know. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't really get it science. Speak so. like an academic. That's right. So so the nucleus is really based around your photography, and then these yeah. things branch out away from that. But it still always references back to your passion, right? Yeah. And that's really the big thing that I kind of throw out to everybody here is that passion is what drives the entrepreneur spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not if you're if you're an entrepreneur that says, I need to go make money. Mm -hmm you're already defeated. Yeah. You know, you have to do what you're passionate about first and then the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. That passion will drive people to see and then react, right? So, and then reward comes by following your passion, right. you know? And so uh, every single individual that you can think of who has become big by society standards, made tons of money and big businesses and everything else, all at their center core have a passion. Mm -hmm. It, 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 now, the, granted, their business, their organization may have turned into something that they never would have anticipated, right. maybe got so big that it really ex, you know, extended past sure. what they could even keep their arms around. You know, but ultimately, the passion is what drove that into existence. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you got your hands in all of these <laughs> little the deals all still reference back to what your passion is in yeah. the community. So. So, final one. Yay. This is this is the one I know you're super excited to talk about, yes, and definitely the thing that that goes back to a passion for sure. Is so we want to talk and finish off here at the podcast. We really want to talk about your business, how these all reference back, and really kind of leading into the thing that you see as being the next really huge opportunity because you've already you've already tested this. It, you've already yeah. been doing it. 
but it's not something that you're just blatantly out just advertising all over the place. This is something that you feel that you'll be able to grow. And that's the fundraiser program. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you some time to talk about the fundraiser program, talk about some things you've done with it in the past Mm -hmm. where you see it's going here in the future. So our fundraiser program was born out of basically we get asked all the time, can you donate to a silent auction? Um, I think every small business in this town gets that request regularly. Um, So for us, And in the industry, we've definitely come up with a system where it's going to be a profitable endeavor for the business. So if you can set up your silent auction item where they are delighted to then purchase on top of whatever it is that they've purchased in the silent auction item, then you're setting yourself up for success and it's just a lead generator. So for us, we always, I always said 100% yes, we will donate to any silent auction in town. And when I when I hired my marketing director, Carla, she, um, part of the reason she was such a good fit is because I told her, I was like, I want to be in every silent auction in town. So like make whatever phone calls you need to make. And she was already very involved in the PTA scene and, and all of those types of things. And so right. she, and she had grown up here and gone to a So she knew all the people that were putting those things together. And what we figured out was, why don't we just put that on steroids? <laughs> like, why don't we just blow that up? Not just donate one in a sea of silent auction items from an event, but actually run an entire fundraiser around that type of a package. Um, So we have offered to all of these different uh, nonprofits in town, organizations in town, um, to, we will set up a custom page that they can email out to their entire list and donor base. And uh, a lot of, a lot of organizations have found it's good for like their off season. Like if they do a gala in one season, then the opposite season in that year to do like this type of, yeah, a, or maybe a little slower fundraiser. or people really aren't thinking about fundraisers exactly. during that time frame. Especially if like, if you're donors, you don't want to do it like right up against your big gala. Cause you've got donor fatigue and like, it's a whole thing. Right. So, um, so we were doing it like off and then eventually we actually figured out we could collaborate with the events that they're doing and I'll get into that a little bit as well. But basically we offer as many as, as many of that package as that organization can sell for a $75 donation to the organization and they get the entire $75. We don't take a cut of that. We even eat the credit card processing fee because you are getting the whole $75 because for that, that lead to come in. 98% of the people that shoot with us, mm. they're not required to purchase anything above the print that comes with that package. We're very transparent about that. It is not a bait and switch. It is not a, you have to buy more right. in order to get it. Um, you're going to get the same full service experience with the design consultation. We're going to shoot you at one of our locations that we're paying a site fee for. We're going to pay our people like all of it. So if you walk away with that print, are we out something? Yes. But for what, for People enjoy the experience so much more. They generally purchase more on top of it. Um, And so it works for us. So we have offered, honestly, any organization that wants to run, any non-politically affiliated organization (laughs) that wants to run uh, one of these fundraisers. Asterisk. Asterisk. I have one criteria. This is not for a campaign. Um, then we are more than happy to set that up for them. So right. we, we do all the back end work. We set up the landing page. We pre-write the four emails that you send over two weeks. And, um, for us, basically it's that nonprofit, um, sending out to a donor list, which are very pre-qualified clients for us and, um, giving them an opportunity to donate to the organization they love and get something that's, it's a $482 value package that they're getting for a $75 donation to their organization. And then if they choose to purchase on top of that, great. And if they don't, no hard feelings. That's how we've set it up. Um, and so they have an entire year to use it. They can use it for blue bonnets. They can use it for fall portraits. They can use it, you know, for whatever they, they, they want to do for a family portrait or seniors. And, um, and we've done very well with it. We've been able to raise a lot of money for the different organizations. So I know we've done we've run two with Voices for Children for a collective, I think five thousand. Two with um, the Children's Museum. Um, we've done one with the American Heart Association. We're about to run one with um, the College Station Foundation, uh, ISD Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we're really seeing a lot of traction. And we're able to, <laughs> to just hand the literally they send out emails and they collect a check. Right. Like, and so when I sit down and I try to explain it, they're like, but where's the catch? And we're like, you send out the emails <laughs> and you collect a you check. You do the email sending. <laughs> That's like, I know you're not going to give me your email list. So right. all I need you to do is press send yeah. and then collect a check. And yeah. they're like, wait, really? <laughs> yeah. And what, I mean, last year during 2020, when a lot of photography businesses were closing, we had pre-sold 110 sessions through fundraiser program. 
and it hit during blue bonnet season. And so we were out on our, on the blue bonnet farm, which was a safe thing. You know, people felt comfortable going out and going to a private ranch. You turn this corner, there's a hundred acres of seeded blue bonnets and, um, and you've donated to your organization and you feel safe going and doing that with your family. And so we were able to kind of weather the storm because of that program. Right. Yeah. Well, and let's be honest. I mean, it's 75 bucks. You're like 20% of the value of what you would normally mm-hmm. be charging on it you're you're confident on your side mm-hmm. that you're going to recoup it through experience mm-hmm. and through that same deal that we talked about at the beginning of the podcast that they're going to get something unique that they probably weren't expecting in the front side anyway right. and then to sit there and go wow i got this for this mm-hmm. and really the buy in there is you know oh you took how many shots because you're not going out there going okay snap that's it that's oh no we get. make a 40 image collection uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> for a reason because yeah. when you get done you're going to go i've also got some other things to show yes. you and so it's it, and again not at the idea of going we expect you to do this sure. at the idea of going we're going to build in what we've already been doing in our photography business mm-hmm. and build that in on the backside here where you're really i mean we're going to probably look at it from the standpoint that we're going to create an experience and show you a line of photographs that, that it's going to be tough for you to walk exactly. away and not buy more. My job is to make you want more, Absolutely. not to feel like you are forced to do yeah, more. Yeah, because like you yeah. had said earlier, in that emotion that you're creating, mm-hmm. that you're generating in those events and, and during that session with that client or whatever, the emotion is the driver, right? right? So here you are on the front side going, we're, we're giving the service away to the the organization mm-hmm. to the 401 we're doing that as a complete transparent pass through mm-hmm. right you decide you don't want to do anything else great they still got 75 bucks out exactly. of this deal and we still are a part of that that fundraising for that organization yes. but on the back side of that as well too i mean i'm a math guy i mean i, I didn't i said i wasn't a science guy but i'm a <laughs> math guy you know the reality of that also is is you feel like your business is obviously going to be good enough to land one in five sure and so i mean if you're landing one in five and you're sitting there moving through this process which i'm sure that the the retention rate is probably higher than yeah. that uh but the idea of sitting there going i'll give you almost a 20 yeah, i'll give you a discounted peak in here mm-hmm. at what we do as a business right and then potentially you have the ability to create the long-term customer Correct. off the back of that as well too. So well, and plus and just that social proof that the organization that you value is is trusting of us enough yeah. to to endorse us yeah. in their in their email list. Yeah, they didn't willy nilly go out and just go, hey, this is they're willing to give us seventy five bucks. Let's right. go. I mean, they know at the same time that you're giving a quality product Correct. out on the backside for that value. We're going to take well care of their more donors. probably than what they're getting, obviously. So, Correct. so they're sitting there going, listen, I, we win. We don't have to do anything. Right. You guys do all the work. Sweet, let's do now, this. Now, don't get me wrong. We will still donate that package to your silent auction too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and let's be honest. Right now in in 2020 and even moving here into 2021 and this will kind of is where we'll close off a little bit but in 2020 and 2021 donations to most you know non-profit i, I keep wanting because I, I do the old term you know 5013c yeah <laughs> you know that's that's really kind of where i grew up in the retail part sure. but, um in these non-profit organizations they've seen it mostly they've seen a decline across the board in mm-hmm. donations where people are in uncertain times sure they're not real sure where that money needs to go right you know, and most and they the, can't throw a gala. Yeah, yeah, and most of these nonprofits are 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 have their hands tied now that the events have either shrank or gone away completely. Completely, right? Yeah. So now they've got it again. Uh, we every podcast I think I refer to the word as pivot. You know, they have to figure out a new way mm-hmm. to be able to. How can I turn this into something? How yep. can I make this work for our business that we can still continue to raise money for all of the groups and organizations that we're working towards? Mm-hmm. So. That's the value that, again, you bring to it as a partner into that right. deal. So let's talk about COVID. That's uh, mm-hmm. the, the final deal here. So 2020 for you and COVID, I was, I was asking you before we sat down about, you know, what did you see where there wasn't as many gatherings, there wasn't as many events, there wasn't as many of this stuff. But then I started thinking there are more people spending time at home mm-hmm. together as a group, as a unit, as a family that 
probably than probably any other year ever. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden I'm envisioning, you know, people staying at home and now all of a sudden somebody's going, Hey, since I finally got you nailed down here, you're working Let's from home. Let's go take our family. Let's go do this. Yeah. Right. So what have you seen in 2020? And then what do you see coming around the horn in 2021 with your business? Well, business, twofold for us, businesses. we were able to weather the storm mostly from our fundraiser program. And then also because when a &M shut down their graduation, a lot of those senior parents said, well, if we're not going to get a ceremony, you're going to go take nice pictures. Right. And our SEO was such that when they then went to Google and said, you know, Tamu senior pictures, then yep. we were up there. And so we, um, in the initial lockdown, it was a little bit confusing in the photography industry in the initial lockdown because there was this wave of um, front porch portraits that mm. became this like viral thing. I remember that. And in the very beginning, it was like, oh, what a great idea. We'll all go do front, front porch portraits. And then there was a backlash very quickly thereafter of like, mm. stay home means stay home. Like stay home. <laughs> Don't even go to the end of people's driveways. And so you had to very delicately navigate, like, what do we feel is safe? Because there was so much uncertainty right. that nobody had the answers and nobody knew what was okay. And nobody knew anything. And so, um, we did actually front porch portraits briefly as a fundraiser for the sexual assault resource center. And then we kind of backed off strictly because as an instructor in the industry, and not knowing how it was all going to fall yeah. in the end, I had to protect my name. And so we had to kind of like, we did all the ones that had booked and then we kind of like backed off. Um, but as far as doing private sessions on private land, mm -hmm. we, I'm not all up in your, in your bubble and you know, we're going to be at least six feet apart. My right. lenses require it. And yep. so, and most of the places where we shoot are out on private land because we have these partnerships with these destinations right. around town. And because it hit during blue bonnets, we were out there. I, I basically, I locked down in two places, um, my house and the ranch yeah. <laughs> where the blue bonnets were. And yeah. so I just back and forth. Um, and so the initial lockdown, we were we were able to weather that storm, but because of the uncertainty, we had no idea that what, how that was going to continue to play out at all. Right. Um, I wasn't doing newborns. We obviously were still not allowed in the hospitals because of, um, to do births because of COVID. Um, everybody's only allowed one support person. And for a while that, that support person, the partner couldn't even go and come back. They had to, once they were in, they were in. And once they were out, they were out. Um, and so that has affected the birth industry incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, but from family perspective, uh, most of the time these families have been together in their bubble or mm -hmm. they have accepted the risk of like, we're going to hang out with grandma and grandpa for this day or whatever. And they've taken whatever precautions they need to and move forward with that. And then when we built Instaland, we, we figured out, okay, if we can build the sets where when you're posing, you're at least six feet apart. And when you're not actively shooting or actively posing, then you have your mask on and right. we have, you know, the sanitizer everywhere. And we limit the amount of tickets that we can sell in any given time slot, which actually works best for the space and everybody having access to each set anyway. Um, then it all kind of, we were able to build it with those things in mind and knowing what we were up against a little bit. Now, granted, I did have a day where I panicked and I was like, we're going to have another shutdown. We're going to build this thing out and we're going to have another shutdown. And I like gave myself a day to freak out about it. And yeah. then I was like, I did the math and I was like, it's worth the risk. Like, let's try it. Right. And, um, the numbers will ease your anxiety some of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and when they don't, you change course. And yeah. so, um, we, what we, what has really like grown our company over time is the the strategy of what's happening, how do we fill a gap and how do we pivot and fill a gap? And everything that we've done over time has been to fill those gaps. I don't want to do weddings anymore because I have a kid and I don't want to do a 12 hour shooting day. How can I change course and fill a gap? What about births? That's interesting. Let's go down that path. What companies here need better images to sell their stuff? Let's go down the commercial path. Let's yeah. see where the holes are and see how we can plug them. And then is that replicable? Is that scalable? Is that something that we can pour gasoline on and go from there? And would you say, kind of, would you say it's made you a better business person? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the big thing for most businesses and what I've said is, is if you've survived 2020, you'll survive pretty much anything. Yeah. I mean, cause you're, you're navigating, you're navigating waters with no map Absolutely. basically, right? You're sitting here trying to figure out you know, how does my business have to change and what does it need to look like to continue to operate yeah. 
if possible. And if it can't operate at this level, where can I, you know, squeeze in between the gaps, like you said, to fill in where the need is because the need changes as well too. Whereas these things aren't being requested as much or booked as much or at all. Then how do we, right. What is the need and where is this? And so you made a reference about, you know, people being locked down and everything. And then an insta land comes along and Mm -hmm. it's kind of this, release away from the lockdown but still us being able to work within you know the requirements that Mm -hmm. cdc sets and everything else and that we're not breaking any of that and we're not putting pressure on the city to be monitoring us and that type of stuff and now all of a sudden here we are sitting there going this is something that may fill a gap that Mm -hmm. we don't even know is a need you know and really a need for most people is the, the, the initial need, if you talk to somebody, is I just need it to return to normal, sure. right? Which we know that's not going to happen, at least initially right now. Right. But as How things... How can we get those glimpses of yeah, joy? Yeah. Or as things release, like if, if we've gone from, you know, lockdown to 25 to 50 right. to 75... You know, where can we fit in those gaps right. to be able to still control everything that's being asked of us as a business yeah. and also still be able to maybe even be out in front of what the new change will look like right. or the new expectation will look like. Right. So the better you can navigate that in the front side, you can be on it, the better. Mm-hmm. And so, again, most people, you know, they may have been sitting there, at, like I said, at the house. They may never get that family together in the amount of time that they had. I tell people, I saw my family a lot more in 2020 than I probably have in any year. Yeah. And so it's a great opportunity, again, for you to take advantage of those times where you go, this may not get replicated if everything gets opened back sure. up. Um, well, or, we also had a sense of mortality, too. That, yes. And that, that was, was, yeah. Like, man, are you reading my mind here? Because it really. <laughs> we're connected. Yeah. I mean, it's that idea that all of a sudden here it is. Like, we can't you, visit grandma. Yeah. Or you lost a family member yeah. this year. And now next year's portraits become way more important. Absolutely. Documenting a history that, gosh, I really wish I would have now becomes I'm going to. Right. Well, and so this is a taboo subject in the photography no. industry. And I have addressed it as delicately as I can on my website but I do have on there like every day is different and we are not guaranteed a tomorrow right. and I cannot tell you how many times I have now watched families that I've photographed go through that and yeah. be so grateful that they have what yeah. I've created or be regretful that they were going to do another shoot before that happened and they didn't pull the trigger. And it's, it's, you, you can't advertise it's fear based no. advertising, yeah. but the reality is, and now as I've, I've, worked with, you know, funeral homes as clients too. And we have this conversation, um, at the end of the day, I can't tell you how many people in my, in my drives and my external hard drives have left us since yeah. I've photographed them. Yep. Um, and how important those images are to them. And, and, you know, people ask there, a lot of photographers, they say, if you don't purchase it at the initial ordering appointment, then they delete it. Right. I will never be able to stomach that because yeah. some, anything could happen. And if there's a chance that I can bless you with an image of a loved one like at some point well, like and a value to say that if you're in the photography business again what may have been what you would normally do yeah you know after whatever six months sure. a year i'm gonna get rid of these maybe now all of a sudden covid makes that looks a little, look a little different right. and i can just give me a little file where i can kind of store these off memory is cheap case. guys yeah extra a yeah. four gigabyte hard to, or it's not yeah. it's not expensive go put it in a drawer somewhere go yeah. put it in a safe and, deposit box and again to that point and this wasn't covid related we lost my nephew three years ago we took a photo shoot that we did i think around thanksgiving uh but it was a photo shoot my wife and i did it Mm -hmm. for for that group which was my brother-in-law my sister-in-law and my nephews Mm -hmm. uh we lost one of my nephews in the deal and those pictures are invaluable Mm -hmm. you know they are really the last captured moments of them as a family Right. right And so when you talk about the 2021 and the flip around on this and as the vaccines roll in and everything else, what would have been, could have been, should have been now probably becomes. And so the photography industry may be one of those industries that is just boomed through the roof. Maybe. Because not, but not because of fear based, sure. but because so of a little more sense of reality. Yeah. Of yeah the the yeah. idea of I'm not going to put this off any longer, right. you know, and, and not the idea that I could lose a family member, but more so the idea of it's my job because my husband's not going to do it or whatever sure. to, to, in capture a moment of time here mm-hmm. that it's family based, it, whether that's the small little unit 
to the really big unit where everybody was out there. And yeah. maybe you have a little bit better appreciation for it now right. than you did before. Definitely the appreciation from those people that if that has happened to them and they experience going through a photography session uh, to capture those last moments, then yeah, it becomes extremely critical and, and probably even more valued than anything that they could probably even put a price on. Right. And those are the moments, man, like... Don't get me wrong. The families that I've been in the delivery with, room with them, I'm very much part of the team. But the families who have then lost somebody that I photograph with yeah. them, ten times more. Like yeah. they, they're on. I'm on speed dial. Like they, because they know they're taken care of. And I've had some that are like, you know, I, I've had to be like, I'm here to document your family for the rest of as long as we need to. Right. Like until I am not here or not doing it anymore. Like yeah, that it's a, co- it's a commitment. I've got it covered. Yeah. yeah. It's a commitment on your end to be there for them, regardless of what their needs mm-hmm. are. And so, you know, when this is all said and done, there's, there's probably a new level of documentation that happens throughout the photography industry that probably hasn't existed in a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now becomes even more valuable as one of those family possessions, yeah. you know, so to say that, that, you know, whether that's, we made it through, whether that's, here's the change in our family to document this moment in time where mm-hmm. we've lost someone, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the critical point of looking at something as, uh, not always concrete, mm-hmm. right? You were saying that we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So it's not fear-based to say I'm going to get a picture because I may not be here tomorrow, but it is the idea of I want to document the moment that I'm in right now while mm-hmm. everybody is here, right? not the what and, like, if. We weren't guaranteed the reality we were expecting for 2020. That's yeah. the same idea. Like we're not guaranteed tomorrow's going to look like today. It looked like, you know, like yeah. we have no idea what's around the corner. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's crazy. Well, hey, I'm so appreciative that you came in today. We got an opportunity. Thank Man, you. we're in at one. 53 oh, heavens. So, so, aren't you so tired of uh, me by now <laughs> i told ashley i said it's real easy to get lost in these conversations that happen here you know if you look at kind of how everything trends in the podcast you know when i first started out and was kind of feeling everything out you know i had great guests in the beginning but i almost feel like sometimes i did them a disservice Aww. by having it underneath you know an hour and 30 <laughs> But then I got people that are out there like really an hour and thirty. Yeah. But, but you know, it's long form. It just is what it is. You pick well, your format. And again, our goal is always to get you in front and let people learn about you, mm-hmm. learn about your business, learn about what it is, and you know, learn about your businesses. <laughs> kind of pluralize that, uh, and and the things that are to come because you know you're in a vein right now in the community that we need you. We need your business. We need all your businesses and we need all those to survive mm-hmm. and to continue to, to, to do well and to continue to be a part of the recovery for the BCS area. I've said time and time again, there's probably not a better community to be in mm-hmm. if you're going through this right now. And we are a community of people. I mean, people say Aggies helping Aggies, but we are in a community where if you need it, mm-hmm. you only need to reach out and say it yeah. and people will come running to it's help true. you. You know, And so where else would you rather live right. than in a place like that where, where it's not tone deaf in the community to the people who are around that understand we need more businesses yeah. in our community. We need more small businesses to continue to grow the, not just everybody looks at small businesses. We need more small businesses to grow the tax base. That's not it. It's we need more business, small businesses to grow the hope. Yeah. The hope that small businesses will always be mm-hmm. an entrepreneur's wish, mm-hmm. an entrepreneur's example of what it is that I can go out, kill it myself, yep. create the next big thing, the next big insta land, whatever that is. <laughs> well, so, and we need to vote with our dollars. And yeah. really, truly, I mean, I was thinking about it yesterday because we were in the market for some couple different furniture pieces and, and now really researching like, Who's local? Yeah. Who's got what I need? Who's you know? And, and, and yeah, a year and a, a year and a half dollars. ago, you pull up a, an Amazon, you sure. pull up a, a, a major corporation, and you're looking. And now all of a sudden, with the talk, especially with entrepreneurs who go through it, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you make a little bit more conscious effort to keep your dollars local and to ensure that you're blessing someone in town. Yeah. Again, like we said, you give it out, it comes back the other direction. So, yeah, I think people are a lot more in tune with that, and they're a lot more adept to spending their dollars locally and trying to bless those people who are just trying to make it. They're just trying to make sure I've got another day in me, another week in me, another month in me. Um, because nobody creates a business as an entrepreneur to see the death of that business. Right. And to, to also identify that 
the hard work that they put in, the effort that they put in, the sleepless nights, everything that goes into running a business when it's just you mm -hmm. or you and just a few bodies that are helping you and you're realizing that you're responsible for these folks as well too, is that you want to give the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody pays a dollar, I want to give them a dollar five in return yeah. as far as the service and the expectation that they know I got well more than what I paid for. Right. And you're in that business. I mean, you're in that business where again, like we said in the very beginning, it's easy to look at those dollars and go, whoa, that's, that's, that's a lot. But when you really put the backside to it of everything that you've put into it, what you give out of it and that experience, you really can't put a dollar amount on a lot of that yeah. stuff. So, and so again, so if you're in the market, I'm going to try and let's see if I can cover all these here. <laughs> if you're in the market, you need a photographer, photographer for graduations, for weddings, <laughs> for births, for senior all pictures, for, I mean, yeah, if you can, if you need something pictured, <laughs> Other than probably real estate, you know, then. But I got a guy for you there. That's right. We can refer you. <laughs> if you need that on the photography side, you've got, uh, it's fig-mint.com mm -hmm. that they can go to, uh, to see your site. They can reach you. Is it 979-217-1924? I, th I think so. It's a Google Voice front number, so I haven't memorized right. it. But it I goes, wrote it down. It goes through to me and my uh, marketing director. So something. I'll yeah, go on the record. Something will happen. I'll go on the record <laughs> as saying if that number doesn't connect, it was off of. Just the look website. on Google. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, the, yes. <laughs> yeah. That way they can reach back to to get information on there. Uh, you've got Instaland currently out at Century Square. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully going on when this podcast airs, yeah. continuing to see leaps and bounds and people interested in that and see these students that are going to be coming back, uh, taking advantage of that. A Diamond Productions for really the commercial side. If you're needing, what is it, headshots? I mean, drone stuff. I mean, if you're needing that stuff, again, that's something you're in the vein of as well, too. And then finally, Vay Canva. Mm -hmm. I said Vay Canva. I know. <laughs> and Vay Canva is something really that we're probably looking for down the road. Uh, something that we're is. We're up and get, running. It's, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, getting, it's getting moving. We need some more vacationing spots and people moving exactly. around a little bit more and everything else. But we're going to continue to see that grow as well, too. So the ultimate Ashley Siegert entrepreneur <laughs> over here getting her hands in there and on everything. <laughs> Hey, listen, man, you got to start somewhere. You've just got a lot of somewheres that you're starting in is what it is. So, so I'm, I'm grateful to have you in to talk about no, your businesses, you. wish you nothing but the best and continued growth and effort and all of these places that you're putting that in. And again, if you got questions again, she's a great resource to reach back to been there, done that female oriented <laughs> entrepreneur. I love seeing that in our community as well, yeah. too. Haven't had a ton of them sitting here in the chair, you know, so uh, again, I'll show up wherever you need me, that, my friend. That's it. You, <laughs> time and place. And I got two, five, eight cameras on me ready to go. So talking about everything you got in your trunk, just traveling oh, and yeah. ready to go and document. So, uh, but we're so grateful to have you in. We're going to continue to pray for your success for your businesses and continue to see those grow. And again, we're grateful that you guys tuned in for us to be able to hear a little bit about Ashley and her businesses. And we just ask again that you keep your dollars local and uh, consider Ashley if you're needing anything that we've talked about today. Photography front, she's got you covered. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, she's got you covered. We are co yeah, you yeah. are covered. Yeah. And so if you're needing to document any of those kind of things that are coming up with you and your family or your organization or your groups or get togethers or whatever, this is the girl you need to come see. And we're so grateful to have you here. So Thank thanks you for your so time, Ashley. It was good talking to you. You, too. you guys have a great day. We appreciate you tuning in for us. Thank you.